Hello YouTube, welcome back to another Agito Live video. I'm just here to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and maybe consider leaving a comment on what you liked or disliked about the video. And I hope you enjoy the content. I'll see you later. You're back sooner than I thought. Any results? Yes. And now, it's up to us to forge ahead. <laughs> Since he's already carried out his last wish, my final mission is complete. But pardon me if I sound curt. It's good to have determination. But the path Mikhail left for you is not an easy one to tread. Why else would he have chosen to sleep in solitude, staking everything on some nameless in the future? But you have the numbers. And in numbers comes strength. So that might just delay your inevitable a little more. Oh God, any more encouraging words? As I see it, shut up, March. That's my encouraging word. I'm encouraging you to shut the fuck up. Far from enough. <laughs> Sir, excuse me, suck the fudge up. The other party will be compliant. Negotiating simply allows us to meet them as equals, and won't grant us an upper hand. Panacone is our rival's home turf, and we already have very few chips left to play with. Rather than idly sit around while the families got us blocked off, an offensive approach might be a wiser course of action. We're more familiar with the Stellaron's properties than most. And since it's the key to stabilizing the sweet dream, it's vital to the family's interests. By attacking their core interests, they're bound to retaliate hastily. And as the saying goes, haste makes waste. That's right. As long as we pose a threat to the Stellaron, either with words or otherwise, we have a chance at gaining the upper hand. But the problem is, on the eve of the Charmony Festival opening, how exactly are we going to get close to the theater? Family security will be airtight. And if we brute force it, even if we succeed, it's too risky. Hmm. So no one's going to say anything? Then I'll raise my hand. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, you'd better believe it. Oh, God. So I heard that before the Charmony Festival begins, there will be a pageant to kick off the festival. As long as we clinch the top spot, we'll be able to attain the title of festive. So Unless I have to listen to March the Better. Go about participating in these festivity auditions. <laughs> I've already procured uh, to tell you the truth I had been preparing to join the auditions all so they're still running this thing huh it was originally just a publicity stunt set up by Mikhail to drum up attention but it looks like it might be worth a shot we'll follow Marge's plan Mr. Gallagher will you be joining us I'm afraid I won't have the time as a virtual character, I've already completed my final mission. Whether Penacone can awaken from this dream is all down to you. Should we ever cross paths again? I'd love for you to visit the Express. All right. I'll have to add to that data bank of yours you've got on the Express. And Miss Firefly, we thank you for all your support. We're faced with a formidable enemy. As long as the Astral Express and Stellaron Hunter's objectives are aligned, we're willing to cooperate with you. Oh, now Himiko's like, yeah, we'll work with you. Just because Himiko threw so much shade at Kafka. But Firefly, she's like, ah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. We've already come this far together. I'd like to join you for the rest of your journey on Penacone. I'm pleased that we can finally fight shoulder to shoulder. I couldn't ask for a better ending. Hold on a second, guys.
Her smile, her, her smile is cute. Her smile is cuter. That helps. Fair enough. This is also the spirit of the Trailblaze. Now, everyone, let's prepare to move out. Here's the rest of my breakfast. <laughs> Changing POVs again? As the last group of contestants, how confident are you in overcoming this is all weird. the challenges? I'm not gonna lie, this is weird. Would you be open to a brief exclusive interview with us? It'll be quick. Your journey is long and fraught with peril, yet under a sky blanketed by the sword and rose! Protect the beauty, the beauty, the beauty! Magnificent and majestic! A knight's head is hard as steel. Brotherland's focus is stubborn as a heel. We don't know. People are pouring in. It kind of feels like all sorts of baddies are showing up. Ladies and gentlemen, please make way. Coming towards us now is one of Pentacone's top ten wealthiest tycoons and the <coughs> Soul Glad Business Empire's founder, Mr. I. Dean. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the director of Soul Glad's factory, I. Dean Lita. My four. Mm, hello, everybody. I'm Himiko. What the uh, fuck is this? Don't you got I can't hide it anyways. Pentacony is plastered with our Yeah, no, seriously. What This final face-off is bound to be spectacular. There goes their pacing, by the way. Precious, my four friends, come with me. Grab a bottle of so glad. Make your dreams a blast. There went their pacing. They just took all of the tension, all of the heavy talk and everything, and just fucking threw it out the door. I'm really, really irritated right now. This better be going somewhere. Yes, it's like the casino planet from Star Wars. It is. You're absolutely right. Oh my god. You've got you've just hit it on the fucking nail. Fuck that movie, by the way. Oh my god, but you've just hit it on the nail. Congratulations, no matter how It's just padding for no fucking reason. Nobody cares. This is terrible. At least with some of the adventuring bits, it was like at least what revealing his backstory and things along those lines, and it was very interesting. Like we just sat here for like it's been it's almost, we're about to hit four hours, and we've probably been in cutscenes for mostly three hours, like talking and doing dialogue and talking and discussing all that. That shit was super interesting, right? We had no combat for like basically three hours, and I was okay with that. But this shit, you know nothing of survive or be destroyed. There is no other choice. 
Can you Potions. find the answer? Terrible. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. I like the whole Robin part. As that was some genuinely interesting story, and now this, yeah, that turned into that ended up actually being interesting, right? Because it really brings the conversation forward and reveals that Sunday's probably the like possibly the villain, right? Um, or the big bad. Um, and it kind of gives you a little more perspective on Pentacony, and it makes you think. This, I don't, I, don't I, I am like when I know immediately upon entering that it's just it's just bullshit. It's like why am I here? Like this is terrible. Like this, I'm I'm gonna make. I need to make a video on the, on this specifically. This is fucking terrible. This is terrible. This is so fucking bad. This is such terrible pacing. This is the kind of thing you put in a side quest. Go on an adventure with Firefly. Do a video game. Do a thing. It's fun. Woohoo. You don't put this in the middle of your fucking story. This is fucking terrible. I don't care. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Just get me out of here. I don't care. 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 I don't fucking care. I'm so irritated. I'm so fucking done. So fucking done with this shit. Get me out of here, please. I was gonna use that why they would put butt, but that just as the tension was getting hot. Yeah, yeah. Why they? Why? Why is this here? Just as the tension is getting where it is. It 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 completely cuts it in a terrible fucking way. Like in the worst possible way, it cuts the tension. It's, it's fucking awful. I'm gonna I'm like gonna I'm gonna like take a moment to like talk about how much I fucking hate this because then I'm going to cut all of this out of the recording. I don't want to waste my viewers' time as much as I'm wasting my time. It's like it's like I was reading a good book, right? I was reading a good book, and I'm at like I'm at like the climax of the story, and suddenly we are now at the beginning of the story, or something like that. It's just like we, we're 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 we change we turn the page, and the next chapter is what is Bobby doing back at home? Like, just don't just don't. It's not a matter of impatience. It's a matter of it's just like the tension is high. We are here. We are there. We're we're we we know all the things we need to know. Why are we getting this this and I get it that like in like a movie format, you often will have that that little bit of downtime right before the big battle, right? Well, we were in the middle of the big battle basically and we're told, "Nah, let's go to something else." Congratulations to in the finals. Welcome to the 30 yeah, it's like, it's like we just started charging down the mountain, and, uh, you still can't skip it. It's terrible. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. What am I doing right now? Seriously. What am I doing? What what am, what am I doing? But Argenti, you know I still haven't done historic quest. I've technically not met you. No way. I, I think I just saw someone, someone extraordinary. I still haven't even met you. He didn't even have him voiced. Are you a knight of beauty? It's fun. So what's crazy to me? You know, okay, this is what this is what's killing me about this, right? So. In the middle of the Ziencio quest, they have us track down the Sanctus Medicus, and it turns out they're being led by Don Shu, right? We go this long quest, you can either let her go or try to capture her or something along those lines, right? Really long quest. And they literally went back and cut that quest out of the main story because people hated it so much. And I don't know why people hated it so much because it was actually very relevant for the story. But they cut it out and then decided to not like really include it from that point they basically gutted the whole thing from the story from that point forward they barely meant they mentioned don't you one more time and that's it she doesn't even recognize us doesn't say anything right and they cut it out and now in this fucking story they're doing the exact same thing they have this random section that has nothing to do with anything and i just why 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 Just, it, it pisses me off. 
piss me off because they'll leave this silly shit in here but they'll take an entirely very interesting and very pertinent section of a story and cut it out congratulations to the well, their audience likes silly shit more so good for them it's why i don't like half the dialogue i choose makes sense before entering the grand theater okay I, on behalf of the organizers extend my sincere congratulations to you wishing you joy on here we go radiance. as previously promised my sister mr yang and i have met with the dream master we delved into the truth about Panacone and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. Yeah, I knew this was coming. <sighs> Just as expected. We acknowledge the perspective of you, Nameless. Panacone does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated, equality non-existent, common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Ultimately, only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Penacone... Don't give me a dialogue option for this, because it doesn't matter what I say here. A dystopia for the survival of the fittest? Or a sweet dream paradise? That's, that is that is a question that's far too nuanced for me to be able to answer in your shitty dialogue system. <laughs> members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Penacone's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Penacone. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, it'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. This way, we'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with. And the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. That is precisely my intention. With all present, let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices. Our ideals and beliefs. And our Man, I'm not gonna lie. Of action. The only path to take. I'm not gonna lie. We've got to this point, right? But the like the tension is broken. Like I no longer I'm no longer hype. Like I don't feel it. Like I don't I cannot express how much that little deviation there killed the entire the entire momentum of the story. Like it just immediately was like, we're gonna do tongue in cheek, laugh, laugh, joke. Okay, now we're getting back serious again. It was terrible. So fucking bad. Why was that there? Why was that section there? That they had no reason to be there. No reason to be there. Because now I'm just now I'm just irritated. I'm not like, hmm, I'm not philosophical. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not really into it. I'm just irritated. And now I just want it to be over with. I, I, ugh. So annoyed. You mean to say that for the longest time there have been scoundrels who would use this the Charmody Festival that I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition? Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the entire planet of Penacone. And then everyone in their dreams will be unable to awaken. Oh. Interesting. 
I didn't actually know that that was the that was the goal. I'm not gonna lie. They didn't make that very clear. Or if they did, I'm just dumb. Hmm. This is indeed surprising to me. The dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charmony Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold a position of great authority. Do you have any suspects? I'd like to ask. Did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? Hmm. I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me. Quite astonishing indeed. If I have offended, the Astral Express extends its sincere apologies. But the current circumstances are dire and leave no room for meticulous inquiry. We're doing this out of concern for the Dreamscape's safety. So, if you could, please. All right, All right well, pull me back in. Pull me back in. Get me back in the game. Get me back in the game. Dream Master, it's just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song, just per the arrangement. <sighs> Sunday. Robin, I've watched you two grow up and know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can surely be lauded as their most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. The magnitude of this matter is enormous and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, the entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Someday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead so that no lies may be concealed? I will do as you command. Robin, could I entrust you, you to be present as a witness, witness to document the truth, and to proclaim my innocence, so that all slander may be utterly dispelled? Mm. I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on earth, just as it is in the heavens. Oh, triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron. So that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Let us begin. There is nothing else to prepare. Understood. Question. Have you devoted your life to your god? Never worshipping other gods? Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself? Always heeding their... Interesting. This is actually, I think... The first time that the Aeons or an Aeon is directly referred to as a god. Like, we know they are, but I feel like they don't actually say that very often. Naturally. They say belief system and Aeon and all this other stuff. It's very rare they actually use the word god. Have you strayed from the path? Not that it really matters, but by your god, it's interesting. Betraying their name? Never. These are all questions Sunday needs to be asking himself. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god? Coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself. Never. Then, a final question. Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past, present, and future? With the Eon as my witness, if I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vows, may I be cursed. In accordance with divine law. They have seen your faith. And have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced... Just a moment. What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. 
The god you both mentioned. Are they truly Shipe? Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were king, embracing solidarity and unity under their light. All duplicity is laid bare before the harmony. Yeah, okay, so Welt caught it as well. Yeah, I thought it was strange that they were saying God the entire time. So I'm glad I'm glad Welt was like, hmm. Such a delicate and complex symphony. Which other god could perfectly harmonize this if not for the great one? She may perfectly harmonize it. Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, spreading solemn and reverent hymns throughout the universe. Later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the hymn of harmony. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, Echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang, being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when you find yourself alone and without... Are you threatening Welt? Prepare yourself for gravitational annihilation! Disintegration! <laughs> so this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause, Sunday, please afford these two an opportunity to rest. What? Yep. No! Hey, caught Welt! Sorry, Robin. It's just you. I did not wish for you to know this. It's who, I forgot who Harmony absorbed. This way. So, this is the true reason I can't sing. The shadow that envelops Panacone is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one uh -huh. who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization, and through harmony... Oh, order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Order. Order. Yeah, no. This makes so much more sense. No. It's order. <laughs> that makes so much more sense. That makes so much more sense. Yes. Yes. This is... Yeah. Yep. This is very... Okay, this is... This is this is very... Okay, yeah, no, I got it. I got, I'm good with this. Order. Yep. Unbelievable. To think that there would be remnants of the order on Panacone. That's oh, in harmony there is only there is order because there because there's it's such there is it's a fine line but it is very different. And order oftentimes is more tyrannical, you know, more yeah. It is. It also has that might makes right kind of thing, right? Like uh, oh man, yeah, authoritarian, authoritarian or like order authoritarian. Uh, might makes rights rival the it makes it makes a lot of fucking sense now. I don't know how I oh, that's great I'm back in what have you done with Mr. Yang and Miss Robin? Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates You should know that these actions make you an enemy of the Astral Express Should we need to stand against the nameless? It would only be myself and the Oak family involved. No, I'd say you reach that point. I'm getting the bat out. I just try to pull the bat out. Just start beating the shit out of Sunday. Give him back. Give him back. Your Give him back now. The justice of Panacone are evident to everyone and have been widely observed. 
Stop being around the push and get to the point. Give Mr. Yang back to us now. Yeah, we had tried Absolute Order. I think everybody agreed it was bad some 80 years ago. Oh, I intend to. But that hinges on the outcome of this negotiation. There is no negotiation. We've already passed negotiations. It is the order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance? Then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. Facts. You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands, and just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape, least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the Order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. The strong wield their blades against the weak. In the victor's it is, this is, the uh, the brink of life. looking at it now, understanding that it's supposed to be order and not harmony, this all makes so much more sense, by the way. Like, everything that Sunday is doing and has said makes way more sense when you look at it from the, the concept of, like, authoritarian, like, order, right? You know, law, you know, especially when you look at it from like a religious faith kind of standpoint, right? When when these sorts of things go extre go to their extremes, um, Natural yeah. selection. The world abides yep. by this principle, establishing the well-being of humanity atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we, or rather, I, possess the power to put an end to this farce. So you've decided to resurrect a dead Eon? No one's ever done such a thing. If Miss Himiko is interested, let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. I've always firmly believed that people can understand one another through peaceful means. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's path striders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Words can hardly do justice to the beauty of that ideal. I'm not I'm not getting Thanos vibes from him because he doesn't like want to wipe out population. In fact, he wants to preserve he wants he wants a per, he wouldn't want a perfect world. He wants a world under order, right? With everything in its exact place, but in a peaceful place. Like where there is no, you know, like there is none of that. Like none of the other 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 stuff. And so to do that, you have to to do that, you have to use force. In order to put things exactly how they're supposed to be in order, I know better than everyone, so, oh, okay, yeah, no, that's definitely him, yeah, no, I mean. Any, Thanos is just people's most recent example, but any really, really good um, villain is the hero of their own story, as everybody says, right? Um, and in Sunday, is not necessarily the hero of his own story, I would say, but he definitely comes off with the vibe of that self-righteous justice, order, all this other stuff. It's too much. It's, again, one of those things of too much in either direction, too much law, too much chaos, too much light, too much dark, too much evil, too much good, right? They can go... It can be bad. Too much excess is always the biggest problem. So... Come with me, everyone. Let us retrace our steps and see once again where this road leads. Huh? Where'd he go? Welcome. This isn't any location in Penacone's dreamscape. It's my inner world. The reason the scenery before you remains unchanged is because your consciousness has drawn on. Sunday's a character we're supposed to get, by the way, I'm pretty gaps. sure. Did you do the same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray-haired guest has experienced it before, so he should understand what it entails. Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. Interesting. Now, everyone, please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. So it's like, it's like the clocky power? Wait, what? So is the clocky a thing of order? What? I'm so confused. I mean, it could be a thing of harmony. People understanding emotions, it would make sense. And order is a part of harmony. 
From this point on, you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. I believe after going through similar predicaments, you'll be able to better understand my thoughts. Let's begin. The first decision. A story about a baby bird. This story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster, and the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the Dream Master of Panacone, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in. Later on, Robin and I lived a time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood, that baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers, and it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath, having fallen into a shrub, probably abandoned by its parents. This is the part where the villain monologues, by the way. We decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold, with fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered, was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, what choice would you make? Stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell. Or build a cage for it, and feed it, giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. I eagerly await your answer. Wait, what? Okay, from the original part of the story that we saw, that's the choice they made. They brought it inside. What? I'm confused. I'm so confused by this right now. I'm really confused by this whole this whole thing. I'm so confused. What? I can't decipher his intentions right now. But based solely on that question, I would probably choose to build that dove a cage. Even if I was going to release it back into the sky, it'd have to be strong enough to fly first. If I left it where I found it, I fear it'd never get the chance to fly ever again. See, I'm with Firefly on that one, honestly, of like, nah, I'd build the cage and take care of it and then let it fly. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I like, especially if it clearly was not going to survive where it was currently sitting. For the little Charmony Dove. After all, leaving it there, it's bound to get hurt by wild animals or something. And that'd just be too sad. It looks like he really has no intention of imprisoning it. Back to the question. I would personally choose to build the little Charmony Dove a cage. No special reason. I do think that a fledgling should have the right to fly into the sky. Yeah, this this is this is this right here. This last statement right here is what I'm talking about. It's actually perfect. Himiko just kind of encap encapsulated it there. If it's literally cannot live at that point, like if I don't like take it somewhere to like take care of it, like if I know for the fact, because you will know if it's too weak, it probably won't survive. With that said, there is also the idea of like 
an animal and things like that, they know how to survive, and they will figure they they will either figure it out or they won't, which is more more of that natural selection kind of way of going about things. But we as humans and people are like, nah, let me help, <laughs> and it's okay to take help. Like it's okay. So yeah, no, I'm I'm just gonna go build a cage for the little tiny dove because yeah. Which would care in a cage. Sure, whatever. Or build a cage for it and feed it, giving it the most care from the warmth of home. I'm happy to see that you made a choice similar to ours. If your mind is made up, let me reveal the outcome of this choice. We passionately nursed it back to health, preparing only the best food for it every day. We even preened its feathers. Later, on the day that Robin left Penacony, we opened the cage door and let it fly back into the sky. I watched it for a long while by the window, probably about three or so days. In those three long days, the little Charmony dove tried again and again to spread its wings to fly into the sky, but fell to the ground, only to keep trying, finally. On the hundred and thirty-seventh attempt, it succeeded. But its attempt did not go perfectly. After flying unsteadily for a while, it fell to the ground. Unable to grasp the direction of the air currents, the fall shattered its wings. It writhed helplessly in my embrace. But it was all for naught. Finally succumbing to a painful demise. And in that instant, our tender care, our given love and hopes, they all became the inevitable push that sent it to its death. Here's the other thing, too. So this is the outcome that happened, right? If we select the other option, we will never know. You will never know if, 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 if the, like, you select the other option and it's like, oh, it lived and would have had the life. You would never know that. You have to make a choice in the now. Regardless of whatever consequences that are going to come forth, you need to make a choice. Here's the thing. If you don't make a choice, that's even worse. That's even worse. Not making a choice is even worse. You have to make a choice. So you make a choice, build the cage. You tried. It flied. It tried to fly 170 times, and it failed. But it tried. I deeply regret the choices we made. Why? Why do you regret Next, that choice? let us head to the second decision. That, this regretting that choice comes from a sense of, I am below. greater than everything. Position exclusive to the Oak family, charged with listening to the problems and vexations of dreamscape residents. That comes from a sense of I am better than. Guidance. It was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the dreamscape. Joy, sorrow, arrogance, regret. The complex tapestry. He was a dream chaser. And an illegal stowaway. Just like the rest of them, he came to Penacony in search of a better life. Except that, to most people, the price he paid. I suppose you could say it was everything. He told me, I sold everything I could at home. The house, the land. Even his two children. He said he could not afford to raise them. And that at least they could eat if they lived as slaves. He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune. And enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy. And he was sniffed out by those pig-headed hounds. After hearing the Dream Chaser's story, I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way, at least he could live peacefully. But I was still too naive to the ways of the world. I did not anticipate that what I thought was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. I'll tell you the outcome soon. For now, 
I'd like you all to make a choice. Interesting. Will you do as I did, and try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit, so that the Dream Chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? Or will you remain silent, leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels, until his inevitable judgment arrives? I look forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. I'll be honest with you, I'd have done the same thing as Sunday in this scenario. Because what else can you do? Right? When you're when in in that position, this guy has sacrificed everything. He sold his kids into slavery, and he's got this crazy plan to try to work back so that he can uh, get his kids back and live a happy life. But he can't do that if he's being hounded by the blood hound. And I have the ability and the power to stop them from hounding him so that he can go back to trying his plan. I'm probably going to tell the bloodhounds to stop hounding him. Right? Because I can only go off the information the guy has given me. And what I feel is right in that situation. And whatever the outcomes that come of that, sure, I'm going to feel bad about it. It is going to be terrible if it doesn't get the desired outcome. Like if the guy ends up being like a murderer or a criminal and doing other terrible things, then I'm going to feel bad because now we've lost the ability to track him down. And it's probably better he doesn't have his kids. But if you sit and you think about every possible outcome of a kind gesture, you'll never do anything. I don't know if you're okay with selling your own children. I think you're someone I want to help. Well, here's the thing. The reason he did it is because he could not raise them. He could not take care of them. And he had no other options other than to try to, to give them a way to actually be able to even eat. If you're, if you're so down on your life that you realize that your children will be better off somewhere else. And your only option is, because again, I don't have that person's, I don't know that person's story. And your only option is to sell them into slavery so that they can at least survive on some capacity. You're probably going to do it, right? When you're backed into a corner, the things that people will do is crazy. Now, earlier I was like, you know, kill the guy, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, obviously. But if I'm sitting in that situation, there's all their other systems. Well, that's the problem. And that is the key problem is we don't know about any other systems in place to help that. And guess what? Funnily enough, we don't have, like, there are systems of, like, People taking kids away from their parents because they're unfit to, to raise them and all this other stuff. But people have to be noticing these things, right? There has to be others around them that see this happening, right? This is, again, where kind of, I guess, to, to relate it to the game, the harmony comes in place. We need to lift each other up and help each other as best we can. Otherwise, things will constantly, like, these things that fall through the cracks get worse, right? So, that's just me. This question... Surely it has some connection to the baby bird story. Yeah, there are drop off stations and, and things along those lines. I can only assume, I, I can only make an us. assumption right now, right? In this story, that the that, that wasn't an option. I'd probably yes, choose yeah. to ask the bloodhounds to cease their pursuit. A dream chaser story. If I acted out yeah. of kindness, I would probably ask the bloodhounds to stop their pursuit and lend them a hand. Yeah. I, I Yeah, I'd probably even go the one step further and be like, how can I help you? Because this sounds terrible. But what cruel repercussion would this choice result in? I think Sunday must have been deeply impressed by the limitations of the strong also i would have been like why are the bloodhounds like i understand the blood are pursuing him because he was like a stowaway cool but like i don't know there's so much like that's the thing with these scenarios and this is like the game i think the game is doing a great job of this is they're not giving you all the information you have to kind of try to fill in the gaps and make your best judgment just like sunday did to go back for them it's still insanely irresponsible i agree with march with that thought there's only one choice let the bloodhound send him back home this person deserves to be punished the question at that point is then but well, what about his kids what if what about the kids that he told 
that I'll come back for you, right? What about their dreams? What about the fact that their father would never come back and get them? Because he never got the shots because you stopped him from getting the chance. Just say, I'm just saying there's so much, there's so much nuance in these scenarios. You know what I mean? There's so much nuance in these scenarios. Yeah, I, I make the same choice. It is what it is. I'm honored to witness you arriving at the same decision. Out of respect, I'll share with you the dire consequences that my choice back then brought about. First, the outcome. He attained major success. After avoiding capture, he ran a business for a few years, very quickly making a name for himself, elevating his status. He might not have become a tycoon like old Otty, but he was considered a character of excellent repute. And then he never went back for the kids. Now then, did he realize the wish he set out to achieve? No. The last time I saw him was in the real world, where the hounds were going to permanently exile him, and I was the accompanying bronze melodia. The mission was simple. Listen to the criminal's repentance. He told me the reason he was in this predicament was because he conspired to usurp the head of the Alfalfa family. When I asked him about his two children, he instead responded... With and I would feel terrible about that, and then I would probably turn around and go find those kids. I would find those kids and try to do better, if possible. In the end, my heart aligned with the harmony, and the good deed I dared to undertake held no value. Turning instead into a wrongdoing. It created a lamentable yeah. oppressor and countless oppressed individuals. It's unfortunate. As to your choice, I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. Next. I mean, comes this is the choices we made, gotta live with them. And the sucks. story this time is my own. I would like to point out that this, this is no reason to stop happened the day I was appointed in the people. Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current Dream Master. And as for his wish, we had a private conversation. What surprised me was that the Dream Master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents. And it was a letter... Yeah, can't discard everyone because of one douche, exactly. The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels. Nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? My sister, of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? To help you grasp the full scope of this issue. Do you know where Robin is at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Correct. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? A stray bullet? What? A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To spread the word. Yo, Robin was like a like 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 the I'm getting in the business. <laughs> Yo, that opens up her character way more, by the way. <laughs> she hoped to ease the people's suffering with song and was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately, stray bullets show no such compassion. Damn. Go Robin, a real one. Is she all right? If the operation was successful, she should probably be recovering in the field hospital. By the eon above, the bullet struck her neck directly, yet possibly as a reward for her consistent deeds of harmony. It didn't hit any vital arteries. Once you've attended to your outstanding tasks, why would she keep this from him? Is this true? As soon as possible. Those damned savages! 
I'll pack my bags right away. My gratitude for bringing this to my attention, Mr. Gopherwood. Now you understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments, don't you? Wow. How could this happen? It's all in the past, so please don't worry. I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies, limitations, and predicament. As grandiose as the strong defending the weak sounds. No, it happens. That's part of life. If you start. Oh. Likewise. Sunday, you're missing the point. Question. One last choice. But rest assured. This choice will not have any grave consequences. Because this is merely a figment of imagination. It goes a nightmare. It goes back to my statement of this all being about nights. individuals. Robin made a choice. Had she had the free to will to make the choice to go there and spread her beliefs and help people. She got hurt doing it, and that is the choice that you make. I don't I, I highly doubt Robin regrets it. Would you still Will there be some people who Robin's do regret something like that? Yeah. That's part of life. Yes. Yes, of course. I don't even need... I, I want to talk to people, but I don't even need people just... Yes. Miss Robin's courage is admirable. And here I was thinking she was just another superstar celebrity. But the fact that she is also Mr. Sunday's younger sister... No. Yeah, I'm immediately running to the left, but I want to hear what I people say. I didn't feel like I've dreamt of similar scenes on certain nights. In the dream, I see blurry faces. I don't know who they are, but I Mimiko's not going to die in this. She's going to get a super power up at some point. Fighting for survival. She's going to take some. over as Akaveli. Himiko's going to become an Aeon. Force. Their confusion and fear are lucid to me. But I also remember... That's the trailblaze. If Mr. Sunday's quest with each trailblaze, dangers and tribulations will surely follow. But would you ever back away? No, it's it's an individual's choice. Like, this is ridiculous. I can't believe that happened to Miss Robin. The strong defending the weak is a and, great And here's mantra, the thing. It's really easy for me to say that I I, nowhere in this, I want to say, am I saying that I would pay this price? Like, I, I would go out and do this, I right? Do. What I'm saying is it's up to each individual person to make that choice. Maybe others to inspire others to make that choice. Because that's a pretty fucking inspiring story. That's the kind of story that gets other people to go try to make a difference, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we're having to go on our journey, yeah. Immediately. Uh, I'll make this decision. I see. Yep, exactly. I am now aware of everyone's stances. Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. The plight of Panacone cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only be established through the order. But you're crushing people's dreams. You're like, you're too weak to understand what you want. It's, oh, Sunday, no. I, like, here's the thing. His, his total authoritarianism, his total, like, order comes from a place of fear, right? He's afraid. That's what it is. It's not, it's not that he is some kind of cruel... I want to be dictator. He's afraid of losing his family. He's a f the family, basically. He's afraid uh, that if if we if people make their own choices, they will die, and I won't have my sister anymore. I won't like I won't have these things, right? I won't have the the the. It's not even about stuff. Or it's literally about his. It's all. It really all comes back down to his sister. My problem is also is that Robin didn't tell him herself that she there's a part of her that knew it would cause her brother like too much. Right. And the reason I say that is because clearly she wrote the letter. Right. So she had an opportunity. 
fact that she had to hear it from the other dude, he had to hear it from the other dude, is not good. The suffering of being tormented. The turmoil of losing your way. How sorrow and even despair set in when matters don't work out. All it's all easier said than done, too, I guess. Pain. Because this is not what happiness is at all. Mm. I hate to tell you this. Life is not about happiness, buddy. Life is suffering. Pain is survival. Um, I wish I had the exact quote from um, uh, from from front of us fourteen because I always reference that because I just I feel like I, I genuinely feel like it did such a good job of instilling that storyline, uh, particularly the cutscene uh, in uh, in Ann Walker with um, um, uh, not Heidelin but the woman who became Heidelin. Um, just live to die to know like the whole thing is just ugh, you just you can't you can't man you got to keep going we you have given into fear the weak how to live a happy life and this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches but in definitive terms a way of survival i see what he's getting at everyone so what is your definition of living a happy life I mean, he works for us seven to five. Good question. Human consciousness is fundamentally an illusion. A Actually, cage yeah. known as self-worth. Yep. People lured in by this illusion make mistakes, yet still ask that external influences bear the burden. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus... The amassing of these individual cages culminate to form a prison. A place dictated only by the rule of survival of the fittest. Nature is always accompanied by predation and sacrifice. Its antithesis is known as order. Yeah. That is what I want to do. Unite people. He basically didn't answer the question, by the way. <laughs> They won't need to make bitter choices any longer. It's also kind of com a little, a little, a little commie. We will all humanity. have. We will all share. A little commie over there. Uh, to build a haven for mankind. Simply describing thoughts is far too abstract. I agree. So allow me to provide a simple example. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and long weekends that exist on some I want worlds. every day to be a weekend. During these you live in a bubble. Rest days, you don't want to live people are without given a either. chance to extricate themselves from the stresses of everyday life, allowing a certain tranquility to return to their souls. This is why he's called Sunday the day of rest. <laughs> that actually God damn, he is named so well because of that. I already knew his name had some kind of inclinations from like, you know, religiousness, especially after all of this. But the fact that his name is that he's literally the day of rest. Oh, I love it. And it is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. They can live out their lives happily during these brief intermissions. It's just a pity that two or three days are still too fleeting compared to the span of a lifetime. Fair enough. Every day is Sunday. <laughs> From where I stand, society's ideal system should be seven rest days. Following Sunday, there should ensue a second, a third, and indeed an infinite procession of Sundays. This should be the face of the new world. Okay, nope, we've gone a little too far now. <laughs> Every person can return to their base selves in this utopia. Some gaze in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating the distance between us and the isolated world of Pagana. Meanwhile, some seek refuge in quiet corners, holding one another, unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. Sounds nice, but also... Hmm... There would be no Not. need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way can humanity face the inevitable end with the purest of spirit. 
living a life of dignity. This is what it is to live in bliss. Basically, it's like everybody can live how they would live their Sunday, their relaxing Sunday. It doesn't care how you live that relaxing Sunday, so long as you're living a relaxing Sunday forever. Here's the thing. <laughs> Until light bondage. Yeah, probably. Um, here's the thing. This is not the first time we've had a villain like this in any in, in, in the spectrum of villains throughout games, right? The first one that comes to my mind right now because I'm an anime nerd is Madara Uchiha from the Naruto series, right? His goal was to put everything under an infinite Tsukiyomi so everybody would live their best life all the time, every day, right? The infinite illusion, right, of you're just living your best life, right? That's basically what Sunday is going toward, too. Um, and we do have villains like this in reality. We have people like this in reality who want this as well. Um, it's just in stories we can really play it up a lot more. And I love villains like this. <laughs> Because they have they have gone so far as to let their genuine desire for peace to be overcome by fear. Right? Fear that what they do is going the fear of the unknown. It goes it always goes back to the fear of the unknown. That it's it's inevitably maybe some of these things are just going to end terribly. Right? Because inevitably everything kind of does end terribly. Eventually you die, but it doesn't have to be terrible on the way there and you can enjoy the moments they're not terrible there because it's all a part of life so it is what it is buddy try to keep it in the context of the game too so. you who are stricken with entropy loss syndrome you of all would surely understand this <sighs> it sounds like a flawless theory. No, it doesn't. There's so many flaws in it. March, you fucking dumb. <sighs> but what is the price to its freedom? Endless? Free will. That is the price. That is the price. The ability to choose. The cost is minute. Merely a personal and eternal sacrifice. Which, in some ways, you could if say... paradise is to be maintained for everyone. Like he said, it's an Someone eternal sacrifice. And you gotta make sacrifices in life. So in some way, it's the last sacrifice you'll have to ever make. End of the cosmos. Yep, solitary awakening, yeah. Awakening? Which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means for <sighs> Well, it depends on your. It, th then you get into the philosophicalness of if if everybody is in the dream, everybody in existence, doesn't that make it the reality? Because that is now everybody's reality, right? But that gets into like I guess sophistry and all that other stuff. Like it just it just it just just whatever, basically at that point. It is not forsaking, but transcending. Yeah. Flesh, blood. Sorrow. We weakness. all live in the matrix now. If the physical is the root of spiritual suffering. Yeah, it's it's a whole yeah, it's a whole can of worms at that point, Lagarde. Like I said, this story is um leading really heavy into very like think. Like you really have to think topics. It's putting it very simply, but you can ask a lot of questions about it, right? Um and I do think some people are gonna be totally confused and totally lost on what the hell is going on. But yeah. But in this supposed bliss people won't have defeated their demons the chance to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them which becomes stagnation in other words it is an escape never played ace combat that's another so. way of understanding it it is a very interesting but there is no shame in here. escape on the contrary the seeds of escape exist in everyone's heart yes but Eternal escape is not... You're not escaping Don't at that you point. You're stagnating. It, Firefly. And as to why we sleep, it is because we are afraid to awaken from our dreams. As someone who often uses sleep as a way to escape shit, yeah, no, he's not wrong. But this is not in conflict with the grand plan. Only in acknowledging this can we truly understand the frailty of human nature. And from there... Show compassion. Like I get, 
Like, I get where he's coming from. And I was like, I don't want to do this. Like, I get it. I get it. But no, it's not. It's, no, I'm sorry, man. I... I admit that you are a born leader. Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yep. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. Mm -hmm. But unlike you, I live for the self. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. The want to escape may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, it is not up to another to decide. Facts. Spitting straight facts. This is the biggest part about here. This is the biggest this is the biggest thing to take away from this. To do any of this is to take away free will. Perhaps in your mind, you also view me as weak. <laughs> because I don't think so. Since Miss Firefly has said her piece, the Astral Express will also naturally give you our answer. We'll leave it to you. Just as Mr. McHale instructed before. Tell him our choice. Which goes back to all the other things that we were talking about before. So I think they did a really good job with this. Not long ago. What is this place? Does this place ring any bells, Misha? I... I don't know. But I feel a sense of deja vu. What is this place? Why are we here? What is happening right now? I'm so... It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express by a nameless. But weirdly, when we ended, okay. it was completely empty. Okay, so now... Okay, here's the thing. Let me write up a little bit. So earlier, when we were with Gallagher, one last time with Gallagher, right before... like this, That was set after this cutscene, right? Which is set after the original cutscene of us being getting touching that thought bubble and there being nothing in there so at some point during that we decided we should bring misha in here because misha is clearly the key of some kind to this because misha's like an artificial person or something because he's like got all the keys and clockworks or something along those lines that's my assumption right now the problem is the game is not explaining that and instead it's cutting and jump cutting Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that dreams are formed from memories and a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, this is you know Panacone best among us. They're doing, they're, they're doing so well. They're doing so well. And yet they're like, We've got to do. We want to keep. We still want to keep some cards to our, thro our, our to our to our chest. So we're gonna instead do like flashback scenes to 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 cut up the tension and things along those lines. Or we're gonna do a little funny casino scene to kind of cut up the tension. And the problem is, I fucking want that tension. I, I, I just I'm so tired of these cuts. It's so annoying. Hmm. <sighs> I, I don't know much about dream bubbles, but if you want to figure out what this mansion is, I'll do my best. I'm actually kind of glad though. I will say I'm glad that they've included Misha into the story because Misha kind of just came out and there was nothing with him. He was there at the beginning of the story and then he wasn't really involved. You know, he's just a bellhop boy. Cool. And then we had the little bit with like Clocky, him, him, him seeing Clocky. So. I'm counting on you then. Uh, Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream? I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. Exactly. This is where you and Firefly encountered death, which we now know as Dor The question now is, who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So identifying them is crucial to us. Yeah, because this is where we ended up after after Sparkle did something. We're drawing closer to the truth once more. 
let's give Misha some time, as I believe he'll unveil the secret of this dream bubble. Misha's like, I don't know what you want from me, crazy lady, but okay. All right, but there are doors all over the place. Hmm. I guess maybe this way. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but let's give it a try. Oh my god, an NPC that actually runs. HSR is such a good video Wait, game. You managed to choose the right door on your Weird. This place is quite different from the hotel. But I just I feel like I've been here before. And Maybe he's like the sun or something. Even lived here for a while. If I remember correctly, there should be a fireplace down that hallway. Lucky and I used to sit by the fire, listening to the crackling of firewood. And and the room on the other side was the toy room. I loved spreading out all the toys from the box on the floor and making up stories for each of them. Hold on. This doesn't make sense. Didn't I grow up in Dreamflux Reef? So what is this place? This could be a case of amnesia. But don't worry, Misha. It's common for everyone to forget certain aspects of the past. Especially His young aspects. Vanished. Most people don't remember stuff from like before the they were like three, mind. four. We can surely get them back. Since this place seems familiar to you, why don't we? Yeah. Then let's check out the rooms I just mentioned. I'm so tired of these guys. Like, this is this is terrible. It's so badly paced. They did it again. I don't know why they do this. Mikhail, that's the name. Now we all know him as the Watchmaker. So, who is he talking to? I'm sorry. I don't know. Anything special about that? Mikhail is... is Grandpa's name. Grandpa? Do you mean... You're the Watchmaker's grandson? No, that fits. But we haven't heard anything about the Watchmaker having descendants. And the Guys, Mikhail we literally Mikhail. just met a guy Perhaps named Mikhail, Mika, and Misha. How fucking stupid can you be? I'm sorry, what? Like, what? Like, come on. Come, like, Could you tell Mikhail. Me about your grandpa, Mikhail? Mika or Micah Misha I Yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea. sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. He didn't want me to call him grandpa because that would make him sound old. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mahaley and Elise. Mahaley? Okay, we're done. I'm done. We're done. We're done. We're done. He'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. So, where is your grandpa now? He went off on a new journey. And it's been quite a while since I last saw him. I don't even... So, I, don't, I don't know. They're just being... It's, this is just... Did he leave to protect Dreamville? I'm. I. Why? Tick tock. I heard some noises from the room. You and Or. Yeah. I'm it's reading now. Of the compass crew, uh, just like Clocky and Miss Mirror. They follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on this. Sailors. Could you tell us more about the compass, Misha? It's like a Pinocchio the story almost. It's a ship bound for the new world. Clocky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the That's a great story. But in the pen huh? Weird. I <laughs> perhaps clock. I think I hear the sound of water. You once mentioned there's a magnificent I'm so, fountain I, up ahead. This story is like Look, there it is. <laughs> uh, I I I I now understand why Ken maybe wanted to rage into the void because this shit is so annoying. 
all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Have you recalled anything, Misha? Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, he often said that those moments felt like returning. Uh, <laughs> you know? Says the guy with literal hey, silver hair. Perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains. Yeah. I still need to do it. There's a bunch well, of side Grandpa stories. Side story home. quests I still need to do. We would stand by the fountain and place the compass. Yeah, I'll do them this weekend on my own time. Toy record them. I made into the pool back then. I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him. Uh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a sea. Yeah. Based on Nisha's record. But this raises more questions. According could this be I'm sorry. I don't perhaps I'll <sighs> We're going to the opposite side, right? You know what's weird? No. We should turn Huh? Something feels different about this. Up ahead is Grandpa's study. Huh? The atmosphere in this room feels. Misha! You finally come! Clocky! You're here! Are those books on the bookshelf log books left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he described our world. I'm gonna have to sure cut this up. Everyone had land on just, that day. I have nothing to say. His information to is study. just like. Telling me that he was embarking on another journey. I asked him if I could go with him. It's not, I shouldn't say, it's not that I don't he care about this information, or it's not that it's not good information. The problem is, home. it's just paced terribly. And it's put in the wrong spot. Flashbacks in the middle of a very serious situation are great in anime. Because those flashbacks last like five, like five minutes at most. Or the episode ends with we're going into the flashback and then you have an entire episode of the flashback with that episode ending with we're right back into the fight. And it works because you're sitting there watching a show and all this other stuff. This is not okay. This is not okay. What sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky. An ocean of... He said that... He knew the crew on the train. Cut and as hard as this. He had asked yet. them to take me along. A train? It's, it's the Astral Express. Then, he gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure. He said, "As long as I kept moving forward, the distant sound of a train whistle." Exactly, Misha. And then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Yeah. This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're supposed. Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. I did. Hey, the shape seems to. This is so bad. This is so bad. It's it's oh god. Just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate. This is just fucking terrible. This is it. This while I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage. Walter gave me this workshop. Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass. I... I was born and raised here. So, this... Yes, but not this dream bubble in... <laughs> Wait, wait! Why does it feel like... I'm... 
March. Do you remember when he mentioned the clocky that only he could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. The answer lies in the Astral Express. His experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with Clocky. Oh, I definitely noticed it. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message left by someone for the nameless. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up. That's the key to the mystery, Mark. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? Um, Akron kind of did. Uh, wait. Uh, no way! That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble is the place where I was born. And I. I'm a dweller. I'll be honest, I still have no idea what the answer is. I, that's the Just answer? Okay, the cool. I don't know what the answer is, but okay. I literally have no idea what they're getting at. I am so confused. I am now just like, I have no idea what's going on. I lost I the cart at some point. here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather... The stuff inside ran away? And the whistle you heard... Was the sound of the express arriving at Pentacony? That's one way to see it. But I believe there's a... How about we start with your name? Now should we call you Misha? Or... Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now... Please allow me to reintroduce myself. I was born on Lushaka, in the Presmere system. Adopted by seafarers, Mikhail and Char. They gave me a treasure. A name that carried their hopes. Mikhail Char Legwork. Or simply, Misha. Wait, what? What? So he is Mikhail? What? Okay, sure. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name. The Watchmaker. Yeah, he is the Watchmaker. He is the Watchmaker. Yeah, I don't get it. So, you're the Watchmaker himself? Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. I'm only a reflection of sure. the child who has been with you. He's the innocent protagonist of Misha's child. Future mechanic on this the press? Cool. also marks the beginning of his journey. Devoted to the trailblaze. At the, the end, end of the, the journey, journey, I left, left this, this little flame, flame which, which I so, so cherished, cherished in, in my, my deepest, deepest dreams. Oh my god, Misha's joining the Hoping Express. To to Tecto's gonna be so bad. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> I can't wait for the video. He somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. <laughs> because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it. And that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in his dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't we? Well, I have a sarcastic friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's what every nameless has to go through. But in the end, you found me. I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. If I may apologize, the Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's 
nothing more than a baseless rumor. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey. I've been moving forward all my life, doing what I could to overcome the op- So, if you ask what's left within this worn-out train engine that can be called a legacy, I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Now that you're well aware of the current situation of Penacony, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you. For the path of trail. I don't know why everybody's so smug. I'll be honest, I have no clue what's going on anymore. I have now lost the bucket, and I kind of just don't care. Story and two gifts. Cool. I want to give you my pocket watch. It has accompanied me throughout my long journey, guiding that naive child and my hat too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never end. Now, it's time for you to make your choice. Once you've made up your mind, open that door and enter the long dream of an old man. I actually have a headache. I just took some, you like, at the end of this corridor some medicine time. for that, so hopefully it'll kick in. Obviously it's not kicked in because I took it like an hour ago. At this point I just realized that. <sighs> Alright everyone, let's make a decision. Although I don't think anyone will have any object. Sure, I want to trailblaze. Of course. We've come In that case, then let's proceed together to the end of this. Someone has to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Please don't go. And if you must, please take me with you. Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't you always... Now go! Board that train and start your journey! Where are you going, Mikhail? I, I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so... I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. Don't worry. You've got what it takes. Don't we already have someone I'll to fix the train? Didn't Himiko literally find it buried in ice and fix the whole thing to the point where it now flies from from fucking planet to planet, galaxy to galaxy, and is once more on the trailblaze? Why the? Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our next stop. <sighs> I. I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiern. I see. This. Place in fact, reminds you of home. Oh no, these things did find before. That's what I'm saying. Why, why, what is the story? Why are we getting another engineer? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's always a reason for a person to be joining. His role will be the engineer, obviously, on the, on the ship. We already have that, though, technically. It's called Himiko. The people of Astana have all of this happened before. No, I understand that. And still have a long way to go. I'm just irri I'm just generally irritated. So everything I find everything irritating right now is really what it is. Let's just tell you that right now. I'm just I have reached a point of irritation, and like a level of aggravated irritation that I'm just like I don't. Everything irritates me. Everything pisses me off. <laughs> don't worry, not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if I leave the express, our yeah. I knew you wouldn't stay on the express forever. But I guess him it goes the navigator. Leave in so. peace, Whatever. my friend. The current navigator. This is 
Mr. Amundsen's hat. But why? When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to write to us. Where are you going, Watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless- Because you're all we have! Have you forgotten about Tiernan? But what will happen to Penacony if we don't find a way out? Ah, oh, Tiernan. How could I ever forget him? We nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. But if, and it's a big if. That's all I will. If I don't come back in one piece, then you'll... Where are you going, old man? Oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Wanna hear it? Oh, come on! Aren't all your ideas just... If you die too, the, the secret of the Stellaron... Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Penacony, so I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Esdana. We'll organize a festival using the Watchmaker's legacy as a facade. So... Desperate. <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? They'd make sure to send an invitation to the Astral Express. Misha! Where are you going? Oh, it's you, Clocky. Take me to Dreamflux Reef. Last night, I had a long... Write it down? Oh, so I won't forget it. Of course! You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a... Yes, but what I didn't mention was... I was a kid, and there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that too. Yeah. And but you know what? It wasn't until it was a compass. Huh. So, your name should have been Compassy, <laughs> and the watchmaker is just... A nameless. <sighs> We've arrived at Dream Flux Brief. So, where to next? You know, Clocky, I don't think I'll be going anywhere else. traveled far enough and it's time for a little break oh so we'll set out again when you're rested <laughs> no I'll stay here and then okay maybe he's not joining the express where okay. it ends <sighs> this is where it ends what do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah, that's what I said. So now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed to be? I've been following you, Misha. <laughs> You're acting weird today. <laughs> Clocky, it's time for you to wake up from your dream, buddy. We can just do what we usually do. <laughs> no, I, I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork, yeah, it resolves all problems in this dream. So, do you know what clockwork actually is? A bunch of things working together to make a thing happen. 
everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to she go. Time. That happens in uh -huh. this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually, what time is it? they gather the courage to make okay. bold decisions. I can do this. Whether it's calming, joyful, angry, or, or sad. All they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork, the will of the trailblaze. Sure. <laughs> Clocky's hands spin around non-stop. Indicating confusion, frustration, and weakness. But ultimately, people still need to move forward. Just, Just like, like your hands, hands always pointing ahead. ahead. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. Trailblazing. Means taking paths your predecessors forswore, and venturing even further. <laughs> the Pentaconi and Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. Okay. Interesting. I like it. I like it. Okay. It got good. It got interesting. I get. I get. I get it. I do. It's just. It's just the pacing, man. Stop cutting it up. Like, I get why they had to do it like that, but it still feels not great. Like, it still it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good, right? You break it up too much. I can't believe that Eon would cast a glance at Penaconi at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Or. Perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even impresses an eon. Yeah, of course. That's actually I was I one of the things I was wondering is how Zip Zipe is actually gonna be the one to like look at us, right? And so this makes sense. Well, Does that typically make us an emanator of destruction? Preservation and Zipe, since the you know they've eons. all looked at us, and that's the Who whole point of being an emanator, is you've drawn the gaze of an Aeon. I don't know. How the fallen angels hold the future of Pentaconia. I know. I know it was the, the order. Case, on behalf of the Dream Master of Pentacony and the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to all of you. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Pentaconi Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And course you won't be in the audience but on center stage since the future of the Stellaron Penaconi and even the entire cosmos is at stake let's draw a conclusion there in all fairness if you truly believe in Akavili's path then show me their courage and determination Zeep's like, oh, two dead paths are fighting each other. Not my problem, but here, I'll help Akaveli, because Akaveli's cool. It's funny, because I was, it's funny, I think I remember, like, in the early parts of 2.0, of 2 I was talking about Zipe, and I was talking, or the Harmony, because I wasn't really using the name at the time. I was talking about the idea that Harmony, regardless of, like, enforced Harmony is a bad thing, right? And so I was wondering if that was going to be part of the storyline. And it is a part of the storyline, but not in the way I was thinking. It's order which was absorbed by the harmony sort of coming out um of of uh, of the path and trying to well reinstill itself so it's, it's very interesting how they're how they're doing this also tread a brand new path cool go to view new path that's in door now yep harmony It's just the path of harmony. You can trial the current path here to further understand the combat mechanics. Oh. Let's do it. Hell yeah. Do that real quick. 
Increase the break effect of all allies. Cause additional break damage when allies attack enemies that are weakness broken. Okay. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Please stay tuned. Why? Please why are you? Why so saucy? <laughs> He's so saucy. <laughs> He's so tuned. saucy. It's great. Please stay tuned. So saucy. Oh, I job, Michael Jackson looking ass, yo. So the funny part is his attack is very similar to uh Please stay tuned. Frick effect boost. Alright, let's go. We need a strategy. <laughs> Well, nobody uses their weapons normally, so it makes sense that the hat just kind of disappears. Deals minor imaginary damage to a single enemy. Deals minor imaginary damage to a single enemy target with five bounces in total. Grants allies with break... Allies the backup dancer effect. Allies with backup dancer have their break effect increased and additionally deals super break damage one time when they attack enemy targets that are weakness broken. Full on aerial dance. The trailblazer is ready when enemy target weakness broken. Now I'm banned. Let's throw the next one and increase allies. So here's the thing. Him being a backup dancer fits with the whole like Robin being a singer and all this other stuff too. We could be her backup dancers. Time to test That's our fun. rapport. Dreams do come true. Oh, it's AoE. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, bounce. Duh, not AoE. It's a bounce effect. Don't worry. You can't hurt me. Stay in step. By the order of execute the Marastruck! No one misses the Marstruck. Enemy data signet markers activated. Time for a good old counterattack. <laughs> nice, like a good, my friends. <laughs> Indulge yourselves. Let's improvise. The mood is set. Just let the show begin. Okay, sure. Sure. Ready for another? It's time. What is that damage? <laughs> Take your position. Super break. What is that damage? Do come true. <laughs> what is that damage? <laughs> what is that damage? What is super break? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Super break. What is that? Being the break damage over and over again? That's insane. Wait, does it... Does it do it for every hit? Does it do it for every hit? Oh my god. That's insane. That's insane. That's so good. Holy crap, that's insane. That is a ridiculous amount of damage. Does that mean he wants to fight us during- I'm afraid so. This is weird. Aren't arc villains usually plotting some dirty conspiracy in the end? But he actually said something like, in all fairness. Could it be that he's underestimating us? Well, in my opinion, Sunday is deeply committed to his own philosophy and genuinely wants to prove that the order is right. I sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and Yeah, square. because the strong don't need dirty tricks and all this other stuff, right? The strong are just the strong. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. Not too hard with my peak swag. Guess I messed around and found out. Oh my god. Get off of TikTok. Stop it. Oh, it hurts. It's so cringe. It's so cringe. I hate it. I don't hate it, but it's so cringe. I don't hate it, but it's so fucking cringe. I'm going to select it. I love it. <laughs>
but he's such a gentleman if evil why so nice oh my god i ain't gotta screenshot this this is oh my god this is insane if evil why so nice <laughs> they're literally taking like actual like statements from people who like play this game and are like just putting them in the game so that in some ways you feel both more connected to the character because it is just you Right? But at the same time, more disconnected from the character because that's not the role you're trying to play. This role-playing game. <laughs> oh, I love both of these, but he's such a gentleman of evil. Why so nice? I have to say it. I can't. Uh, are you backing out now? We've even dealt with a Lord Ravager of the Destruction. So a follower of the Order won't be a big deal. But nothing anyway, backing out. we can't leave the Stellaron unchecked. This is about Trail now that we've taken up the mantle. However, the same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight. No, it did not. And they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. A desire to dream. To slumber and escape reality. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an eon. This confrontation is far more... What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? I believe Firefly is trying to say that she's heading off to another battle. Mm-hmm. Are we finally going to see the cutscene where she fights Acheron? We still haven't actually Before seen that cutscene. The Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said, I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. Three times? Three times? This can't be serious, right? The first time was a painful death when I was stabbed by the Blade of Dormancy, which led to all subsequent events. The script will always come true. But in a way that will only be revealed when that page is turned. So now I've understood the meaning of my second death. And I am prepared to face it. If all goes well, my efforts will provide crucial support for you. Only by achieving victory in this battle, can we secure a future for Penicone? And only then, my third and final death won't come true in the most terrible form. The most terrible form? Does that mean... The true death. Where everyone in Panagoni loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Have you made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. May we meet again in reality. Makes you want to pull for her? Honestly, it hasn't really changed my opinion of her. I like her as a character, but it doesn't make me want her as a character. May your trail. Like she has not tempted me once. Not when fucking Boot Hill's standing right over there, buddy. Huh. I dreamed of a scorched earth. Everyone, are you ready? A new shoot mm. sprouted from the earth. It bloomed in the morning sun and whispered to me. Tension. My biggest death. May, May we meet, meet again in reality. Nice. That was a cool cutscene. <laughs> Cute girl with a resolute personality and a mech. Come on, man. No, I, I, After I'm, today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history. I'm not saying she's a bad character. I'm not saying she's not a good character. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I don't know. You'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the dreams. 
Panacone. I hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers. Why are we having a flashback to a thing we already saw? Then again, that was like that was like four hours ago. You clearly don't remember, so we'll show it to you again. You mean my three deaths? We'll expand on it now. I guess. Sure. Silver Wolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. Oh, I love this blade. Well, I want to live. I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's... That's something I'll never desire. People die. And I am no exception. I know. I know, Ken. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. But that's exactly why we have to choose where we want to rest forever. Facts. Facts. Do you exist just to perish? We must live without regret. Are you not the same, Blade? The end you desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now... This is an interesting contrast of characters, right? Because he cannot die and she's literally going faster than death. I know I said this earlier in this... When we were looking at the scene before. But it really is a, like a good contrast of characters. I should die as a human. Though its definition escapes me, isn't it? This the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. A tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. But one day, it will bear the name Firefly. And all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life. That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought I could sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end? It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, ceases to exist yeah not just those nameless even mr wings is just like you stubborn won't listen or give up no matter what well fate is unpredictable i guess if we weren't bound by those cursed paths maybe we could have had some good talks but in the end we managed to do it now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? They said, go to hell, you worthless traitors. So what's interesting real quick is that the Yarilo 6 story was someone seduced by a Stellaron to save their, because they they basically were like, I can't save my people and all that other stuff. Panacone, again, another story where someone is basically convinced they can't save and are seduced by someone. So everything, you know, they're, they're doing the order, but it's still kind of destruction. Um, and then the Zien show was like a direct, like a more classical direct, the baddie is trying to kill all of us, right? Well, I don't know if they really meant it, but if longing for freedom means going to hell, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Let's get together and have supper again in hell. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. There's one more thing. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. To the imperfect tomorrow. Damn, so Misha and Galaga are dead in the story already. Damn. You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries in this desolate place. <laughs> that does not look like a berry of I've ever seen. It's particularly strong in a place like this. It's a shame these berries don't have much flavor. It's not really a berry. Seriously? It's usually a little smaller than that. In case you didn't know, this fruit is pretty juicy. The only downside is that when you chew it, it becomes 
Extremely spicy. Yeah, she has no taste. Have you lost your sense of taste? I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together isn't the big events, but rather these small yet unforgettable moments. Oh. Just the small things that matter. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self annihilator must face. At least I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well, congratulations on adding another footnote to your journey. By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Orgron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. Huh. <laughs> Quite an ambition for such a small girl. So, uh, what happened? She... became stagnant water. Well... My condolences. Condolences? I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely won me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or, perhaps I'm just afraid. Afraid? I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her. Just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain, disappearing into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left. And besides this faint, warm red, there's almost nothing. Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth in the red color. Hmm. Because I have experienced this warmth many times. Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. And that for every remaining moment of my life, I'd strive for a better ending for all. As long as this red color still lingers, I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents her hope. a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself. Fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will cut off nihility. <laughs> the one blessed by the sleeping and shapeless is considering yep. how to kill them. Yep. That's truly pure nihility. Yep. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire do I realize that I'm still alive. When will this rain ever stop? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down I weep for the departed the sky will clear up have you heard of a planet named Biari Scamandros Don Hung it's one of the paradise kingdoms shuffle, yep. under the influence of the harmony a sought-after wonderland for the inhabitants of the Dardanu Major and Minor systems. 
Half an amber era ago, the family held an unprecedented festival there. And after that, everyone on the planet became part of the family. Do you think the same thing will happen on Penacony? Yes. Or how else can we explain it? The family deliberately used the Watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here, but banished the Emanator of the Nihility. Because of the Nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other Paths, but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. Maybe that's the risk they're trying to avoid. Interesting. I would disagree. Bioris Commandros is not part of the credit system or connected to the Silver Rail. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone... ...is different. Here's the thing. In the, in the, in a really dumbed down way of looking at it, right? You know, everything will eventually end, it all goes away, blah, 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 right? All paths lead to Nihility? If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war on almost half of the factions in the cosmos. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is. What do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The Harmony here has impurities. Do you remember the ancient swarm disaster? Tazerond, the propagation, brought endless havoc to the universe, and it eventually evolved into a fierce battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war, the propagation and the order. Coincidentally, their downfall is related to a certain eon. Shipe, the Harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the crusade against the Imperator Insectorum and devoured Anna the Order for unknown reasons. Holy Forgeroni! So you're saying that the two leaderless paths are working behind the scenes? Why is the prop- wait, the propagation? I don't see any descendants of the propagation yeah. in Panacone. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the family Trying to resurrect a fallen eon? I was gonna say, we already dealt with propagation stuff. That's Ron May's area. Let's not deal with that here. Okay? I can't say for sure, but they're definitely planning something for the Charmony Festival. Oh, now, this is getting way too complicated. Is this why you want us to leave Astana right away? Are you giving up? The Charmony Festival will start soon. There's one thing that I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do so. Mm. Time is running out. I have another plan. Hold on. Are you thinking of using the Jade Abacus of allying Oath? We bring the hunt upon Panacone. <laughs> exactly. The assistance from the lawful Cloud Knights would be enough. Think it over carefully. You can only use that. It better be worth it, buddy, because I was hoping we would use that against the destruction. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are. They're also once in a lifetime treasures. Aww, Dan Hung likes us. No, but seriously, like, I'm pretty sure we can handle this, buddy. I don't think we need all of the ZN show for this. I think we got this. I'm, I'm you know. Are you the only one here? The nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are gathering to our yeah. This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the chosen one who harmonizes the varied sounds? <laughs> What do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival. In our plan. But the plan has changed. As her brother, I... 
I know she doesn't want to sing for the order. So I'll take her place. Hmm. You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. If you consider this a betrayal, well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down the other sun if necessary. Damn! I love... Okay, look, I get it. He's the bad guy, but I love Sunday's character, man. Do you believe in karma? <laughs> if karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. Like, Sunday is weirdly, like... He's weirdly intimidating without being, like... Like... Physically intimidating, if that makes sense. All right. Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Yeah, he's got a lot of charisma. A lot of charisma. His charisma is maxed the fuck out. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Why? You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you is destined to follow this path to the end. Is this part of your plan? Of course. You're still as clever as you were when you were a child. The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony. And reveal I may need to look at those, those Sunday League figures and then I need to find out what's going on with them. I'm just like, in my dreams, I need to dream about Sunday again, and I mean it in all the ways that that might be possible. I have one final question, Master. Why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's for justice, my child. If we lose justice in our hearts, we'll make the same mistake as the Harmony did. So, it's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... Well, that's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment. The number is probably significant for some reason. I shall ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun bathed in my light. My people shall flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. This is the interior of the Penacony Grand Theater. Oh, it's quite exhilarating to be flushed into the air by Soul Glad. But why is the venue still closed when the Charmony Festival is about to start? And not only that, the entire theater is... Even if we're late, a grant. Let's explore around. Same. Be careful. Who will be Freeman? Please stay tuned. The atmosphere here is so creepy and unsettling. I guess there's no music. That's the Even weird if part. There's no audience yet. There should be some staff around. Why is it so silent? Yeah, it's the lack of music that actually makes it kind of. Hmm.
Are these puppets part of the stage setup? Something feels off. There's no other grand the- So Sunday's messing with us? He said we'd have a final showdown on the stage, but why is there no one here? My apologies for the delay, March 7th. <laughs> you scared- I'm waiting for you behind the curtain. Following the Asdana tradition, I invite you to enjoy a stage play in three acts before the festival begins. History is a mirror reflecting the universe's true essence. Let's use this opportunity to delve into the rich history of Penacony and the Eons. Within it, naturally, the future takes shape. Let us commence with the dawning of the world. After the Dusk Wars, darkness veiled the sky, and chaos consumed the Earth. Anna the Order emerged, destined to restore all existence. That marked the first day. They gathered nebulae and forged them into picks, thus creating a grand lyre with black and white keys. Strike the white keys, and the sun rose. Strike the black keys, and the moon rose. And so, the cycle of day and night arose. That marked the second day. Wow, they literally have their own, like, God did this on this day, and then God did that on this... Wow. It's good stuff. Yep. Yeah, Book of Genesis. Thank you. I, I didn't remember the name for it. Oh, Book of Genesis. HSR edition. I kind of love it. Prisoner. Where are we now? The atmosphere here looks similar to Sunday's inner world. Perhaps this so called stage play is created with his abilities. You did say. I did. Yeah, yeah, no, they're they're incredibly ca it's like the Catholic is strong with this one. This act I like is it though. Ode to prisoner. Given the I love using um in I like a lot of stories and stuff that I, I do for like D D when it comes to like religious and gods and stuff like like I like using a lot of this stuff, especially because I play a lot of World of Darkness games with vampires and stuff and you know, they use the um story of Cain and Abel as like the you know, where vampires come from, so I I like to use a lot of this crap. I like the iconography. I'm really looking up as I managed to dodge prison during my recent trailblazing expeditions, but now I genuinely wish to avoid a violent clash with my esteemed guests from afar. Therefore, I've arranged three acts before the situation becomes irreparable. Where shall we start our narrative? Well. Let's start with the time when Penacony was still a frontier prison. for the departed. It shall fall. Reach the end of the story in your own way. Is that all? Yeah, 
You know what? Yeah, you're right. Just acker on the elite mobs. I don't even know. I forgot that I could even do that. I'll be honest. I forgot I could even do that. No lie. In 2147 AE, a prisoner named Hanun ignited a struggle for liberty and emerged triumphant. IPC referred to it as the War of the Frontier, while the Asdanians dubbed it the War of Independence. Yeah, no, I agree. Regular mobs are kind of like whatever. We've shattered the cages and expelled the It's true that Hanunu was a legendary hero, but it must be acknowledged that while he bestowed freedom upon the prisoners, oh, okay. he didn't grant them true liberation. The three However, nameless stayed on the planet, endeavoring to spread the tenets of Trailblaze throughout the frontier prison. Alas, their efforts proved futile. I feel I hear the music like picking up in the background, okay. Uh, uh, okay. I'm here. I'm here for it. Once again. As Donna was engulfed in war, this time the enemies originating from within. The prisoners remained prisoners for the rest of their lives, fighting for freedom rather than living for it. The crazy part is we started over there, somehow got all the way around there. It's, it's crazy sometimes. As you can see, their sentences have long ended, and the IPC guards have long been expelled. Yet, these prisoners remain enslaved. Freedom permeates every corner, except fragile souls. It gives solace only to those who believe in its existence. Does that look familiar? Not... Kind of looks like Enna, I guess. Some of the things from Enna, I guess. Some of the machines, right? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. These are some of these are in the Sparkle trailer. Yeah. That's true. I can see that. This thing has bouncing boobs, by the way. I can't help but notice them. The stripes kind of point them out and then they kind of jiggle. Hamako's boobs are super stiff, but this thing has bouncing boobs. But also your assistance in its completion. Feeling sticky? New combat music? Hardly any time left to say farewell. I like it. Huh. A quick divination. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Take your positions. Dreams do come true. Did that hurt? Don't. Uh. Prepare for my super break damage. I just realized I don't have a Nihility character in here, but that's okay, I don't care. I see through you. <laughs> Stay in step. Let's improvise. I'll go easy this time. Feeling spiffy? Another journey from the still waters of oblivion. No one can restrain you anymore. You are free. 
Thus concludes the first act. Amidst a raging war, the frontier prison headed toward becoming Land of the Exiles. This must be how Panacone was constructed. With the aid of outsiders, the prisoners were finally liberated and established the Land of the Exiles. However, it appears that Sunday aims to convey the spiritual plight of the prisoners more than the physical aspects of imprisonment. Mm -hmm. uh, this show is a bit too literary for my... Think, March. Think. For more than like four seconds. Please. Think for more than like four seconds. That would be great. Use bleed. Actually, you know what? I have to use Himiko. I have Himiko's DPS. Use Himiko. She might break more. If there's anything you we'll need, use Ronme. Don't yeah. hesitate to ask. Do that. It's you again. They transmuted streams of stars into inked nibs, creating symbols to be pronounced and counted. They molded stardust into flowing rivers assigning the righteous upstream and the unjust downstream thus hold on a second I just need four of them. all things were marked and the world learned to discern between good and evil that marked the third and fourth days I like this a lot. They're doing a good job. You, the music is getting more, more and more. Okay. So big. They added so many new zones, by the way, with this patch. Yeah, they cooked a lot. Ode to Fool. Oh. Ode to Fool. I've been streaming for seven and a half hours. Well, the surroundings are different from before. I honestly, I was told this is the like six six hours. We're way beyond that now. Tidier now? Well, I'm at six hours and I'm at from time of starting recording, which was literally the moment I teleported to the Astral Express, is now six and a half hours. Behold the ensuing tale, a struggle for power. Panacone witnessed the... Probably need another hour or so, I'm gonna bring Akron back out, I just realized what I need to do. ...scent of the seven major lineages, tree, grass, flower, bird, beast, fruit, and insect. We did go on a few tangents. Okay, for the purposes of my sanity, um, there you go. Peace never truly graced land of the exiles. The history in this era is rich and intricate. So please, allow me to present it in allegorical form. Another hour or so? Okay. Oops. Right there. of the exiles was in disarray, besieged by both internal and external perils. Though the Shut seven up. major lineages appeared united Dude, on the stop surface, talking over there. Can't hear Sunday. Harbored their own ambitions, leading to ceaseless conflict. We are 
The Black Plum family was the first to fall. They withered away in the White Desert event, orchestrated by the Alfalfa family. My child, you did not serve the old master. The leader of the Alfalfa family sought to defect to the IPC, trading freedom for survival. However, his eldest son slew him in the name of righteousness and ascended as the new family head. Hmm. I mean, since I'm here, I might as well get some materials. Only when Gopher Wood led the family to land of the exiles and earned recognition from all five major lineages did Panacone earn its new name, the Land of the Dream. Outsider, I beseech your aid. I can't wait to see World 10 in Simulated Universe. By the lurking instigator. Uh, you want us to help you? What do you... I wish they could regain their reason and cast away the shackles of hypocrisy. This is the second act. Looks like it's about Penacone's journey. But this new master seems like a bad guy to me, don't you think? Perhaps this is the truth Sunday is trying to express, if you read between the lines. The Harmony changed Penacone just as the guards once did. Looks like we've got to help those guys kneeling down over there calm down. In the absence of my master, I am free. <sighs> Wait, read that again. Calmness. <laughs> She'll be over the lingering poison of the past. Calmness. Why did I put that there? Because I may not have realized that. But it makes sense. Master, now that you have gone, I. Interesting. Once I stood as the most loyal guard among all. Interesting. Master has long departed, but why? Master is no longer here. I thought I'd be free, but I'm not. Hmm. Master is no longer here. I shall be my own master. Enforce compliance. Or I shall return to my former master. I... Without a master, who can... Thank you, dear outsiders. My servants... Have this sanity. architecture of like bone and all this stuff, it looks a lot a lot like um end of the order. Eat me, one and all. Your former master 
shall not return. It is through righteousness and unwavering support for one another cast aside the veils of hypocrisy and embrace one another. Get ready. Looks like another fight is about. Immersive theater. Okay. You don't need the tips. The snow blankets all of us done. The sky trembles and the earth teeters on the brink of collapse. At the edge of the silver universe, the first buds sprout under the rising sun. I love this music. Destined for oblivion. That just right. Let the show begin. I don't like that I ultimate animation, though. I, I, the ultimate animation is not great, especially on times two speed. Can you find the answer? Free will or still waters of oblivion. Think the better team here would actually be Dill. All these enemies seem to have physical fire and imaginary weakness. Alas, they remain but slaves till the very end, with the illusion of freedom. Thus concludes the second act. Amidst an illusory harmony, land of the exiles charted its course toward becoming the planet of festivities. This is how Penicone fell under the family's control. Since the arrival of the Harmony, the land of the exiles has undergone dramatic changes, not all of which have proven beneficial. Oh, that was a nice snap of my neck. Holy crap. Oh. This guy really loves dramatic scenes. Bet he comes from a whole lineage of stages. Shut up, March. God, I hate March so much. She's a constant undercut of the series. She reminds me of like the Marvel movies at their worst when they're incredibly quippy for like no reason. You guys know, ex I know you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. They get incredibly quippy for no fucking reason. Like always, Don Hung. Let's make this quick. Go with this. Unless there's not another one. I assume there's gonna be another one. They used the planetary rings to establish the law, forging a code of conduct among the masses. A grand lyre with black and white keys served as an instrument, while symbols of articulation and numerical notation took the form of musical notes. The downward flowing river became a melody. And the canon and music of is eternal and form. universal. Connects all of us. Thus, all mortals found their unique place within this symphony. That marked the fifth and sixth days. This guy is really into these puppets. Shut up, March. God, why couldn't it have been well? Why didn't we just send my, I don't know, like, I just, there's no point. Ode to order. Oh, I get it now. The last scene is all about singing the praises of the order. And the atmosphere here is completely different from the previous two scenes. Man, they really do have a lot. There's so many zones. This is the concluding act of this play. I have showcased the past and present of Penacone, hoping that my desire for change resonates within you. I don't know why I keep changing my team, because I need Akron to be able to, like, fucking just zip through people, so... It is what it is. And now, I future. shall reveal its future to you. Trying to get 
there. Stream four. The people back for We will make choices on their behalf and bear the response. Without the king, who shall protect the weak and stand against we the shall mighty. support one another. Stream four and stand against the mighty. It's funny because you know what? That's all well and good. Everything they want to do, totally fine in a certain to, to, up to a certain point. The problem is once they die, once death comes, the next generation is entitled, and they do not, they will not do the same thing at all. Maybe not the immediate next generation, but eventually these things start to erode. Values change. Reasonings change. The times change. Circumstances change. And again, it comes down to, you know, who are you to decide all this? For we have become kings of all things. I have no idea if I'm going the right way or not. I think I am. Yep. Got there in one. Now we'll use the Dill team. Hey, aren't you supposed booty cheeks. to kick off a short story and have a fight here? Just Shut up, March. To complete the story Don't make fun. Just like we did before. So, do you think they're mind me? Farewell, former king. I see. How did it go? Puppets on strings. You can't change them? What is that? My apologies for my negligence. I forgot to inform you that the final part Damn. was scripted long ago. Damn, the cheeks and the booba. What the hell? Our previous king recounted to you. Now it is time for the final fight. Prepare for battle. Looks like descending from the infinite spiral staircase. Sovereign. Interesting. But of course I of course when I changed it, it ended up not being ended up not being the right element. Whatever. It's fine. Take your positions. Dreams do come true. Wait, it took me all the way back out to here? Oh my god, game. You suck. You suck. You suck. Oh, there's a return to it? Okay. Prepare for battle. Well, there was a way. Oh, yeah, there is change lineup. There is actually a change lineup. I didn't even see that. I knew I saw it earlier and I just remembered it right now. So. That is good to know. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. You know nothing of survive or be destroyed. There is no other choice. Let's play for a while. 
Feeling spiffy? Let's... Can you find the answer? Leave it to me. Okay. Stay in step. Let's improvise. The mood is set. Let the show begin! Here's whatever. Another journey begins on the still waters of oblivion. Let's begin. Oh, oh. Take your position. <laughs> I weep for the departed. Finisher. I weep for the departed. In the hush of expanse of a nocturnal reverie, I leave faint traces behind when his mind shall wane while you shall transcend. These mob designs this are weird. This is the final scene. It's much more straightforward. He wants to expel the harmony and establish an empire based on the order. Let's go. Once this stage play concludes... I hope so. This is interesting. I like I like, I like all of it. It's good. It's good stuff. System hour until the they time the world with meaning, perfecting all things in the heavens and on earth. Then they rested from the labors of creation. Yet all beings cried out to Enna. Under the banner of the Order, you have defined all things in the cosmos. But this made us realize that we are but puppets in your hands. Thus, on that day, all beings united and cast the Eon into the Abyss of Oblivion. This Grand Theater looks totally different. Is this the power of the Order? Everyone, get ready. This could be a tough battle. Yeah. Huh. I love this music. It's good stuff. It's okay. That marked the seventh day. Cheers and chants reverberated in the Interesting. Look, there he is. That concludes everything related to the order. What are your reflections on this, my dear guests? <laughs> Nevertheless, this is but a trivial blip in the annals of galactic history. What truly matters is the course this river shall take in the days to come. You've arrived at the perfect moment. The Charmony Festival is about to commence, and it would be a shame if you were absent for the Harmony's prologue. Allow me to extend my warmest welcome once more. Welcome to Penacony Theater, the very core of the sweet dream, the abode of the Stellaron, the grand stage of the Charmony Festival. His halo looks slightly off center. It's weird. And the very place where the future right? okay. of Pentecost. It, it's off center. It's usually Charmony centered. I feel like it's always been conflict. centered. It looks really off center. It's bothering me. Your unwavering faith in the trailblaze is truly impressive. True goodness can only be achieved through faith. Allow me to point out that falling into a permanent slumber is not happiness. 
especially when those people are driven by someone else's will in their sleep. Do you still believe that the Order only seeks to control the universe as their puppet, Himeko? No matter how perfect your vision of paradise may be, a cage remains a cage. People will never achieve true happiness in a world like that. They would just be toys for the eons. Are we not already just toys for the eons? I mean, we have free will, but, uh... <laughs> it seems you have misunderstood my intentions. Allow me to clarify. My desire is not to resurrect a fallen eon or become one myself. My sole objective is to create a paradise free from eons where the order ensures the dignity and happiness of all humanity. Yeah. A paradise exclusive. Yeah, this is way more of the Yeah, okay. Cuz like I was like he died like sun, on Sunday the order was vanquished and everybody was cheered and humanity was united. Interesting. That means the eon wasn't around. Okay, so yeah, okay. Sorry, I didn't really I'm not like I'm so in like trying to get my thoughts together. I have a tendency not to talk out loud what's going through my thoughts cuz frankly, I don't like saying shit that I haven't fully thought through. If I can avoid it. That's not the case. If people are to live with dignity, there must be nothing and no one above them. In your so-called paradise, you would be the one reigning supreme. That's a contradictory statement, brother. She just said, because Dylan Aeon's reigning about whatever. <laughs> Looks like we won't be able to convince each other. Now that our conflict has been destined. Let's unveil our paths and reveal to the universe the true path. However, before the prelude to the future begins, please take a moment to ponder the questions I've posed. Huh. Is darkness equal to daylight? Are sinners equal to the righteous? <laughs> if you are born weak, which god should you turn to for solace? Good point. All right, so uh, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna restart. I'm gonna change my lineup. Change my lineup. Consume. I'm gonna change my lineup. Change my lineup. Consume, change my lineup. Um, so we have physical, imaginary, and fire and lightning. Mostly physical and fire, though. Unfortunately, I have no reason to bring you. You just don't do anything for me right now, buddy. Um. And I can't change you currently? I don't know why. Okay. I cannot change uh, him currently, so I guess I'll just take this team and go. Fire, fire, lightning, imaginary. I mean, imaginary kind of worked on these guys, the lightning here. But unfortunately, I need a Nihility character to go with Nihacron, so. And then Sparkle is her best support, so there's literally no, no, no other here. Ten, nine, one. Feeling spiffy? Let's play. Nihacron, go over. Still waters of oblivion. Let's begin. As one. You know nothing of the weight. Be survive or be destroyed. There is no other choice. I weep for the departed. <sighs> it too shall fall. Uh. Did that hurt? Don't. Uh. Another journey begins. Dusted for oblivion. Kind of the music up a little bit. All right. A quick divination. I'll 
go easy. Do you understand me? Free will, or was it fate? Huh. Leave it and stand down. Yin and Yang. I weep for the departed. Back around, go burn. Survive or be destroyed. There is no other choice. We came together. Together as one. It's really good music. It's kind of subtle, but I like it. I wish it was a little bit louder. I don't know why it's so low. It feels like it's I very already low. know your decision. I now permit you to gaze into the sun. On these 107,336 stones, uh -huh. the almighty and powerful strings of harmony are at my disposal. The supreme tuner, harmonious choir, the Minicus. Ominous choir, the great Septimus. Every time you break a layer of enemy tethers, you gain a certain collective shield. That shield can take damage on behalf of all allies in the shield effect represents the amount of damage the shield can currently endure. No, why? Why? Really, game? Really? 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 Fuck you. Restart challenge. Usurp it. Interesting. Let it play on slow for a minute. The still waters of oblivion might guide the wandering soul. Yeah, fire, lightning, and imaginary. Okay. Calm your body and my soul be noise. I weep for the departed. Did I kill the boss too fast? Don't let the song distract you. Shut up, Mark. Yeah. Information in importance. Again. Why is it perceptive? Why? Answer this. Why do the harmony and the order merge into one? Yeah, I killed the plus too fast. The time has come. Creation will be reborn from the remains of the gods. Time to hunt? Radiant spirit. Heed my word. Show no mercy! Yeah, wasn't that boss supposed to have, like, three phases? Or did I just really genuinely kill it that fast? K 
Keep going? Okay. to remember such details well uh, it's a long story uh, simply put Don Hung used the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath when we were in the middle of a fierce battle and summoned the general to help us just in time and then we returned to reality look this is your room everyone else has also returned from the dreamscape Himeko and the rest are at the lobby discussing matters with the general and now that you're awake, we're we're in it we're in a genjutsu. We in the infinite Tsukuyomi. This is not real. This is got this has got to be a bait and switch. Because if it's not, if it's not a bait and switch, this is like this this not this this quest is terrible. <laughs> Sleepy head. That voice. Okay. Is that Black Swan? Oh my God. That. That <laughs> it better be a joke. Say say psych. Say psych real fast, because that was terrible. Hey, where are you going? Hey, we meet again, sleepyhead. What? What's Miss Black Swan doing here? Nothing, Miss March. I noticed he was awake and wanted to check to see how he was doing. Though the strike from the general was timely. Its destruction was also immense. When emanators collide, ordinary people inevitably Oh, suffer. once more confirming that the general is an emanator. Yep. But, luckily for them, the dreamscape is my home turf. Thankfully, I managed to get everyone out before the harmonious choir collapsed. Oh, so that's what happened! Uh, thank you- Don't mention it. After all, I wouldn't want to see such precious memories vanish. You're heading to see your friends, aren't you? Would it bother you if I walked with you for a short while? Of course not. <laughs> Why would you think that? Even when you're around, Mr. anyways. Are still busy. I skipped through the line, Let's sorry. Go look for Don Hung first. I'm so I'm so confused. I'm so confused because they're. Because the the problem though, so the problem I have with the situation, obviously we're in some weird kind of dream thing going on. I hope is that it once again undercuts every single situation. Every time the tension or something gets to a a good climactic point, it immediately gets undercut by these like like it just stop. It's like nope, now we're doing something else. It's fucking awful. I'm I I'm really irritated by this. Like it's it's. I have nothing else to say other than what I've been saying for like the last three hours is that they keep doing this like, we're doing a thing! Oh, no we're not. What? You're awake. How do you feel? And the thing is, they do it in such a way where it's like, they show you things that you're like, Oh, then we'll use this as a way to be like, hey, but it's actually not real. Like we knew the Zen show might be showing up, so of course they use that as a way to go to the next one. It's it's just feels terrible. It just it just I was enjoying myself, and every time I start to enjoy myself in the quest, the quest is like, no, you can't enjoy yourself anymore. We have to change the scene, we have to change what's going on, we have to do something else. It's so frustrating, and I fucking hate it. belong to the sky so we should help them return there sunday stopped being sunday the illusion was so impossibly blissful that i realized that's crazy i actually really like that as a, i like that as a hook for why she got out she got out because her brother stopped being who he was he became he became so so blissful so happy about everything right that it actually became unrealistic and so robin broke out of the erosion because it's not her brother anymore because because we as people are who we are and that's okay you gotta accept that right and i i, uh, I like i like that i like that bit i'm gonna say that right now i like that bit 
Akron, Black Swan, and Robin all the same color scheme. This is our final hope. Yes, they do. And his dream is founded upon the harmonious So is the hat. Namely, everyone shared wishes. It will only materialize once the aspirations of all beings in Penacony merge as one. At present, it has become impervious due to people's desire to remain slumbering within the dream. And in order to destroy it, we must make everyone in Penacony want to wake up. Now comes the tricky part. How do we do it? Humans yearning for sweet illusions borders on obsession, leading them to subconsciously resist the harsh reality. Therefore, I carefully selected a moment where he was completely unguarded, guiding him to uncover the truth himself to make him regain his consciousness. However, to wake up everyone in Panacone and get them to share the same determination, that would be nearly impossible. Indeed. I'm afraid it's almost as difficult as resurrecting an eon. But we can't just stay here and do nothing. This is a critical moment for the whole universe. Who cares about some dumb number? I assume uh, that, yeah, this will just start spreading from here. <laughs> Thanks to Black Swan. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And thanks to the Memo Keepers in Penacone, too. I believe your partners have also awakened from their dreams. This is the first step of our plan. With the assistance from the Garden of Recollection, those who possess a strong will, like you, will gradually awaken from the dream. These free wills are the discord that will sway Anna's dream. However, awakening... I know, yeah, I know, Ken. I was surprised you stayed stayed this long. I was surprised you stayed this long, but like, I, I'm trying to get through it, man. It's it's literally infinite. It's We're almost at eight hours, literally infinite. You have a good night. I wanted to record I wanted to edit a video out today, but this quest has literally been eight hours, if regardless of me going on tangents or not. Challenging. We can seek assistance from the outside. We've long been aware of a potential solution. As Donna is a galaxy known for its abundant memoria and the remarkable phenomenon known as Synesthesia Dreamscape. When people first enter this place, they often find themselves and others sharing a collective dream. At this very moment. There is only one dream encompassing the entire Asdana system. So, you mean, if we can attract a large number of outsiders to this system, their free will would intertwine with this dream and shake it to its core? However, those outsiders might also succumb to the dream and become the foundation of the Order instead. I mean, that sounds like summoning the hunt. How can we gather a huge number of people as determined as you within a short period of time? <sighs> Looks like the JDAP kiss of allying oath will be the only solution. No. No need for that. Keep your wants and lifetime treasure. We don't need to bother yeah, the Sien Joe Alliance for such a tiny request. You, you want thousands of people with unwavering free will? <laughs> it's easy. Just leave it to us, Galaxy Rangers. Aw, oh, snap. You can gather Galaxy Rangers? <laughs> Outsiders may see Galaxy Rangers as elusive and disconnected individuals, and actually, they're right. And that's why we have a tacit understanding among us. Do you know what it is, Acheron? It's the relic I returned to you. Exactly. Its owner must have told you that it's meaningless to anyone other than a Galaxy Ranger. That it can only fulfill its purpose when returned to its rightful owner. Because it's a burial artifact. 
worthy only of a hero who has served the Galaxy Rangers with honor. When its light illuminates the universe, it means the fall of a hero. And in the direction it falls, countless meteors will streak across the sky. Those meteors are Galaxy Rangers, coming from all corners of the cosmos, driven by a shared purpose. <laughs> Without fits with the hunt. The it does fit with the, the another the concept of the hunt. Because we abide by a common principle. We abide. The hunt abides. The with them comes the dawn. Interesting. We stayed silent for far too long. Now it's time to remind all the cowards, oppressors, and villains of the universe of our presence. I like us. I'll be the one to ignite the first spark. Once the dreamscape is swayed, I'll complete the second step. I'll fine tune the slumbering souls with the song of the harmony, interrupting them with the discord of trailblaze and guiding them towards reality. It's true that some people are born strong and others are born weak. If the trailblaze is the target of heroes, then the harmony will guarantee that the strong help the weak. Only the people of Penaconi themselves can be the saviors of their homeland. Their path of happiness should be forged by themselves. While I may not be a nameless, I'm willing to instill courage in all those who need it. This includes my brother as well. Anna's dream is too cruel for him and everyone else. Your plan sounds well-conceived, but still, it appears somewhat idealistic and romantic. I agree with Black Swan. The flaws rooted in human nature can't be eradicated overnight. Do you believe these efforts alone are enough to convince everyone to choose the right path? I agree with you, Black Swan. That's why the most critical aspect of this plan is not to convince everyone to choose the right path, but to inspire them to save themselves. <laughs> so, you're the key in the end, I assume? The Harmonious Choir possesses the power of an emanator. To overcome it, you'll need the same level of power. She'll have to Final suck it into annihility. The sweet dream will be my responsibility. She okay, so she is going to that's be. A relief to that's hear. interesting. I would imagine, if it, in my head, what that means is that she is going to be the thing that tries to bring the dream down, and everybody's gonna be like, "We gotta escape!" Ah, and then leave. Something along those lines. Now that our roles are assigned, let's get to our battlefield. And Man, they really baited and switched with that fucking trailer on the Zed Show thing, though. Good. I'm glad we're not summoning them yet. I didn't want that would be way too May soon. I have a moment alone with you. There's one more thing I need to explain to you. This grand festival is drawing to its close. This is the starting point for the ultimate stage of our journey. Just as it marked the beginning of all the stories in Panacone. faith in you. However, before we depart, there is one more thing I must tell you. There's something you should know. We were able to locate you within this boundless dream and find the key to breaking free from the dream. All because of one person's unwavering dedication. Firefly. She awakened from the dream ahead of others discovered the Express amidst the stars, and brought us valuable information about the remnants of the Order. She may have been aided by the script, and it came at a cost. As you know, Firefly is a stowaway who entered the dreamscape in a different way from ours. Without the dream pool in the hotel or assistance from the family, she can only awaken from this dream in one way. A real 
death. We mustn't fail her determination. I'm not implying that we must win this fight no matter what, but our resolve should match that of that courageous lady. Are you ready? Very well. Now, please close your eyes. Every stop telling me to close my eyes. Team must include Agito Harmony. Okay, here we go. Finally, we're actually on the last one. I was so confused. It was never letting me like choose a team. It never had this big thing. I was so confused. I have more thoughts at the end. At this point, I'm just gonna, gonna just keep letting it ride. Keep letting it ride. How long has this rain? If I remember correctly, it has lasted for decades or even centuries. The unwavering determination of the hunt followers persists even in death. But thankfully, we've guided those lost souls to their lives beyond. They were heroes in their time. And they won't be reduced to puppets of the Nihility in their death. You see? The shadows on the sea have vanished. Do you remember? He once said that the sky would clear when the regrets of the departed had faded away. But it's still raining. I know. So, why is all this? Why did this rain choose me? Because someone's regrets haven't been fulfilled, perhaps. Mortals who walk the paths are like. Sailors on a vast ocean, leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans, and for some, their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the waves. Sin thirsters, the obsessions of the past writers. They emerge from the depths of Ix seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny, unknowingly repeating the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it, leading purposeless lives. However, these hollow phantoms, they have journeyed with me for such a long time. Oh, so this is how it is. I'm already dead. Yes. Are you watching over me? This is my duty. As Acheron, the Watcher. Oh, okay. I'm guarding the path to the Abyss of the Nihility. Guiding every soul reluctant to become one with it. Back to this side. But She's literally the fairy if man. this is what the departed ones expected, should you try to change it? I don't know. But someone once told me that when the inevitable moment came, he hoped that someone would stand at his grave and place a bouquet of flowers. Even if it doesn't make sense at all. Some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless. I have experienced that much already. Please extend your hand and then close your eyes. I'll carry your wish with me and fulfill it. Only then will I be able to put an end to the final regret by the Dead Sea. Will I... Will I see them again? Yes. That is certain. Because it was you who told me about the Express. Your two former companions. The expedition cut short by the swarm. Your narrow escape from death. In your encounter with the Galaxy Rangers. Who's this, Mikhail? And Penacony. 
The hometown to which you could never return. Yeah. For countless times, I got rejected by the family and had to pass it by. But I knew that my companion was still there. Okay. Oh, this is Tyrannin. Okay, yeah, yeah. Are you still there? Yeah. Take my hand and come with me. We will leave this place. You'll embark on a long, long journey, shrouded in darkness. But fear not. As a touch of red will be awaiting you at the end of the path. That's the color of existence. Follow it, and it'll guide you and illuminate the way out. By doing so, you'll eventually reunite in the warmth of the sunlight. Thank you. May death be the end of your boundless dream. Guiding you back to the waking world. Welcome to the horizon of existence. This place is one of the thousands of manifestations belonging to the sleeping and shapeless. And it's also an exit out of the nihility for the awake ones. Let's bid our final farewells here. Yo, I'm here. Yo, X. Okay, I said this every time. I swear, there's two little eyeballs. There's two little eye. Like, there's one right here. There's one right here. Everything else, every other pixel is kind of like whatever you. But these two pixels, it's the same as last time. They 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 sort of stick out just a little bit more. I'm telling you, it's the eyes of X. Always distinguish between reality and imagination. All right, Gray. Life is akin to a winding labyrinth where memories serve as our soul companions. I'm trying to see if I see everyone's been until they exist. Yeah, there. May your schemes be forever Can see it now? Yeah. It looks like eyes, man, I'm telling you. Like, there's other pixels, and but these two are just distinctly there. It's too cruel for him and everyone else. To the imperfect tomorrow. I still remember the question on the invitation letter. Why does life slumber? Why does life slumber? Yeah, he's just a smiley we face except black. Yep. Yet, but we're about to awaken from this dream. Or perhaps... Such is the answer itself. Leave this place. Return to where you belong. And... Awaken Panacone from this dream. Yeah, purplish, yeah. As I said, our plan is not about convincing everyone to choose the right path, but about inspiring them to save themselves. So... When will people actively save themselves? I'm going to push into a corner. The answer choice. is when they are in yep. desperate situations. Yep. Like a drowning individual in the deep sea. When one's body and mind bear immense pressure, agony, confusion, and despair will follow. I firmly believe that. The fragility of humankind often freezes them in their tracks. But in truly desperate situations, they will strive to save themselves. And now, Panacone has enough heroes to lead them forward. It's through this inherent, self-centered instinct that people exert their utmost effort, even when they know their struggle is fruitless. As absurd as it may seem, 
It's their resistance. As for now, it is time to guide them. Not as a savior, but as a nameless a among savior, those mortals. Mine. In this way. There they are again, right there. Right there. You will reunite. I can distinctly point them out. In the warmth every time. of the sunlight. The rain is intensifying. Before we part, they're kind of doing that Genshin thing where it's too me much to dialogue over and over and over. I get it. We, we get the point. I get it. So far, you have forged unbreakable bonds with numerous individuals and entities in the sweet dream. Sure. Might I ask if you fear severing these bonds with your own hands? I feel no fear. If there is a vast, lifelike dreamland that is virtually indistinguishable from reality, a realm without death, where everyone can attain the happiness and fulfillment they deserve, living blissfully ever after. I would ask, would you wish to stay? Imagine if this splendid dream were fated it's the to same questions he asked us before. Friends, family, strangers, everyone, and every face they remember. The joy and the heartaches, the vows sealed and those left hanging. All will inevitably march towards a predetermined ending. If you had grasped the journey's finale right from its inception, I would ask, would you still embark on this journey? Let it show without hesitation. I'm glad. The answer itself doesn't matter. What matters is that you've made a decision. Facts. Gotta make a choice. Listen, touch, and ponder. Yep. Yep. And there Live, lies feel, the think. Yep. It's all the same. Cherish it. Because that's what makes us exist. Yep. Such is the only answer humans can offer when facing the nihility. Yep. If the nihility represents the primal fear of life, rendering any lofty convictions insignificant under their imposing shadow, then behind this shadow, there must exist the most fervent source of light in the world. Just as every life that edges closer to death fervently approaches the end of the nihility, we must pursue that primordial light. Now come to think that you exist in the nihility, and you watch over others to depart it. Such a task is absurd and meaningless. Nevertheless, someone had to do it. As for the meaning you mentioned, even if it's a meaningless task, I've come this far, haven't I? Hmm. Even if the future you forge may not even belong to you. Yep. It may not belong to me, but it definitely belongs to someone. Mm -hmm. have experienced. In that case, allow me to do something meaningless too. Please, do me the main. Perhaps my existence will vanish in the next moment and nobody We'll remember this conversation or your answer. But I believe that your name should be remembered. And this universe will remember it as well. Some things are difficult to recall, yet there are others. 
that I find challenging to forget. Such is memory. A creation of the past that blossoms into significance in the distant future. I remember that marks the start of my journey. The origin of the vibrant red hue in my life. And the most fervent element amidst every tempest. That's my name. Raiden Ozen Mori. May. Yep. Another fucking Raiden May. The golden dream is getting restless. In the coming long nights, I'm afraid you will face many setbacks and witness many tragedies. And in the end, you will only see in black. But please believe me, that in that monochrome world, there will be a glimpse of fleeting red. And when you make a choice, it will appear once more. What you must do is ponder its significance, then return to the waking world. That's where we all find our answers. Yes, good see. Okay, okay, I'm in. Let's go. Wait, he has three phases and three health bars in each phase. That says X3. That's never been there before. All things in this world have their I can only assume that's what that means. Constellations are human creations. Three armor bars? Gotcha. Oh, yeah, because his health bar is here. Okay, yeah, no, I get... Oh, okay, three... So three break bars. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. That makes that makes sense. Everyone, keep up with my tempo. Awaken from your dream. No matter. Did you Man, maybe I should have brought Ron May. Damn. Or was it still waters of the guide the wandering souls? I weep for the departed. Scrape. So good. Can't wait to hear to more of it. If you have any objection, feel free to make your case. You know nothing of the weight behind this power. Witness the stars shatter before you. Survive or be destroyed. There is no other choice. Let's play our own melody. The show begins. Okay, it looks much better when it's slowed down. Sped up, it's kind of terrible. <laughs> Another journey begins. Consistent, fleeting as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. Leave the rest of me. Calm your body and mind. In this phase, I weep for the departed. Dust spring, 
I'm, I'm kind of, I'm silent. I'm sorry. I know I'm being very quiet, but like, it's just, I'm soaking it in. I'm thinking about how I want to do this because this fight is pretty freaking cool right now. The music. Together as one. I'll take the lead. It's my turn. No, oh, noisy. I'm fine. Stand down. I didn't need to do that. I don't know why I popped my ultimate. Witness the stars. I thought another turn of it. Survive or be destroyed. Oh well. There is no other choice. Let's play our own melody. The show begins. I wonder if he has specific lines for this. Let's play our own melody. Wake up from the dream. Because they did the same thing. They did the same thing for um um Jing Yuan, where they had the uh, uh what's it called? Different lines for the uh, the fight, the the Fantilia fight. All things in this world have their strategies, constellations, our human creations. <laughs> Converge and awaken. Existence is bleeding as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. The funny part is this fight will actually be so much easier when it's not, when I can have a preservation uh, laser. Instead of harmony. Well, I also could see how I could use a dot team as well. I would just use Gwen instead of Black Swan. So, phase two. Robin? There seems to be another kind of sound coming into the Order Symphony. Yep. Panacone's first and last disharmony. Hell yeah, that was cool! Click these horizon echo from far to attack enemies. Those imprisoned in their dreams are awakening for freedom. We just hit him with a train. Hell yes. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, it's awesome. We're just smacking with the train. Go. I'm into it. I'm into it. Let's go. Let's go. Kick some ass. Still waters of a boy, my guide for wandering souls. 
I'm actually gonna hold on to that. Stand down. Next race. Oh, we have complete, complete ways to use it here. Keep up with my tempo. Let's play our own melody. The show begins. Just the idea of running a boss, running boss over the train is awesome. It is. It's super awesome. I love it. Listen to our song. I won't go easy on you. Witness the stars shattered before you. Survive or be destroyed. There is no other choice. If we had never experienced solitude, how could we have embarked on different paths? Now, our final talk has concluded. All the damn, they really are. Has been completed. The inevitable day has arrived. The embryo of philosophy will reshape for us all of reality. If your paradise can save more people, sever my path with your hands. Verse a grant truth. Since you gain a certain quarter shield. Yep. I guess we should start out with this. I weep for the departed. Ooh, I like it when you go in there, it actually muffles the all the music. Oh. I forgot to do that. It's cool. Dust spring. It too shall fall. Leading as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. Okay. Second day calendar. Third year grant language. Hmm. Should probably use this. Oh, another voice line. Okay. That's kind of cool. Even if it is March 7th. That's such a cool shot, though. Shield. More shield. All the shield. I really agree to like Robin's song. Same. That was pretty good. That was, that was, okay, that was cool. Was, was that the Zeep Sam? Huh. Yeah, 8 through 18k shield. That was kind of nuts. Glad I got a... Glad I got a big shield. <laughs> Yeah, I think Ron May would be the better support here. 
with with welts, and then like a different, basically a dot team would do incredibly well against. So I definitely want to fight this boss again. Uh, super break damage. That's a, that's a terrible one, but that's okay. That's such a cool shot, though. Yes. Super break damage. Good shield back. Did you come here of your existence, fleeting as the dawns do, destined for oblivion? Stand back. Damn, didn't get a, didn't get a effect. Keep up with my tempo. It's my turn. I swear on words. Now only will rest in me. I won't go easy on you. I'm insolent. I weep for the departed. Dust of rain. Oh yeah, I definitely want to do this fight with Blue Hill for sure. Now you finish him off with the train. With the train. The weakness of humanity cannot be redeemed by others. Yeah. Let's go! Hell yeah, that feels good. So why does life slumber? Because someday. We will wake from our dreams. First year of the AE 2158, a fiery conspiracy erupted in the land of the dreams, but soon faded in chaos and destruction. Whispers carried the tale of those fateful 48 system hours when a sun teetered on the precipice of collapse, a paradise stood on the brink of destruction, and a world was poised to surrender to its new master. Amidst it all, a body decayed, a pack of vultures gathered, and a brother and sister were doomed for eternal separation. And so, an eon succumbed to slumber once more. Some celebrated this fall while others mourned. Among the insignificant witnesses, mere specks in the vast tapestry of the universe. It was said that this time, the Eon met their demise with dignity. As the cosmos bathed in the radiance of a pure dawn, a tempestuous storm brewed on the horizon. The chant of everything for the Amber Lord grew ever louder. Yet, no matter how one contemplates it, time inexorably swings Klopot's colossal hammer in eternal cycles. The tale of the Astral Express reaches both its conclusion and a new beginning. Time marches forward heralding the arrival of a new chapter in the history of trailblazing expeditions. Brother.
Father, do you think the stars will fade away? This one has a wallpaper. Where did that come all of a sudden? Because the constellation that looks like the bird, the torrent eagles, looks a bit dim lately. <laughs> it's the torment eagles. Don't worry, it's still there. It's just it's located in the inner ring of Penacony and can only be seen when spring and summer overlap. As for the question you asked, I think stars do die, just like people. But do you know, sister? No star actually belongs to the present. The light we see from them is from a long time ago. Even after the stars perish, their light will travel millions of light years, spanning countless years, to illuminate the night sky of another world. In our paradise, I believe there will be a star like that, shining with the same light. Its radiance will last forever, and its name will be happiness. No, not just one star. We should have two stars, or maybe even more. Yeah, you're right. It's a deal. It's a deal, then. This is our promise, and nothing will sway our ideals. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> is it actually the end of this time? Or are we getting another freaking end credits? This is technically the third one I've seen because of the fact that, uh, I chose to take the ending where you actually, you know. They actually put Welt's real name down. Because here's the thing, Firefly still hasn't shown back up. Here with our first one, yeah, so I bring up the enthusiasm and curiosity, healing from the Zerina, your system, light and fire, and working down there, I can have to she into the room of the fire. I really decided she joined the crystals of the world as well, watch her three church of the memoria towards the end of the war, then she... She gave up around this guy. Kind of cool, she's dead, creating a profound and fucking influence of later generations. She was the true founder behind the land of dreams, oh wow. Former car of the Outer Express and now Stan Gunsayer. He is worship of the Blood Legend of the Lamas from Solon, Blood Legend of the Lamas from Solon, Blood Legend of the Lamas from Solon, Blood Legend of the Lamas from Solon. I am so aware of being so real with my friend, Blood Legend of the Lamas from Solon, Blood Legend of the Lamas from Solon, Blood Legend of the Lamas from Solon, Blood Legend Which is going a little bit slower. I can read fast, not that fast. Looks like it's big words in the tent, like it's big text. Just to poke fun at me? No. I'm just impressed. Not only did you venture alone into Penacony and discover the truth of Dreamflux Reef, but you also managed to escape with the help of that Knight of Beauty. Wait, Argenti really was here? <laughs> Remember the recording you received from your Trailblaze friend? It's now the most valuable chip in this game. However, this came at a high cost. Losing a cornerstone is a hefty price to pay. Diamond just called a meeting to discuss what to do with you. 
just as I expected. So is Diamond planning to demote me or kick me out of the Ten Stone Hearts? <laughs> Why don't you take a wild guess? Well, all right. Then I'll guess. He's going to promote me to P46. All right. What will you wager? Are we talking about a real bet here? I don't want to wager anything just to escape your clutches. But if it's just a friendly bet, I'll put on the line what I did when we first met. I'll bet my life, ma'am. <laughs> Interesting. But since it's Diamond's call, no one can predict the outcome. I'm on my way to Penacony. Once everyone is settled, we'll return to Pier Point for the final showdown. Sounds like I'll be out of the action for a while. Finally, a chance to kick back and relax. Yeah. Leave everything to me and Topaz, child. Thanks to you, as soon as the Jade Stone was delivered to the family's compound, we finished up our preparations. The seeds we planted have taken root. Soon, it'll be time to read. Everybody the chanting forest. for the Klopoth. Huh? Let's wrap it up for now. Looks like I've got a visitor here. Uh -oh. oh, so many surprises today. Didn't expect a Galaxy Ranger and wanted criminal to show up here. One who managed to take out two IPC members under the noses of our fleet. Do you understand what that means? Screw Wubba Boo, I just put him to sleep. Don't try to intimidate me with that nonsense. Besides, I've taken down more IPC lackeys than the residual value you squeezed. And I don't mind adding a few more zeros to my wanted poster. I have a question for you. Be honest, or I don't mind we putting the bullet, bullet in your head. head. Tell me, where is a swallow Snyder? Oh, I swear to God, I fucking knew it. The problem is I still don't know if that actually is the conclusion. That's my problem. Did we? Technically, we left. <laughs> Superstar. Yeah, we didn't deal with the Stellaron at all. Yep, it's still a problem. You're absolutely right. God damn it. Uh, we're still in the dream. That was really cool, but we're still in the dream. Still haven't dealt with the Stellaron. Agaron didn't actually do anything. I'm so irritated. I'm so irritated. All right. All right. All right. I need to. Uh, I still need to put a video out today. It's already like nine o'clock. Holy shit! You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a my thoughts. I'm gonna do a my thoughts video first before I do anything else. So, I'm ending my recording there for the those 